Good evening. It is April 20th, 2021, and welcome you to the 14th in a series of 14 budget hearings uh, on the City of Phoenix trial budget. I'm City Manager Ed Zerker. It's a privilege to be here with you this evening. Uh, we are uh, being hosted this evening by our two newly inaugurated councilwomen from District 1, Ann O'Brien, and from District 7, Yasmin Ansari. And we'll hear from them in just a moment. But before we go do that, I will ask our interpreter, our Spanish language interpreter, Mario Barajas, to introduce himself and make a short introduction. Mario? Thank you, Ed. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mario Barajas, and together with my colleague, Elsie Duarte, we will be serving as Spanish interpreters for today's virtual budget audience. We ask as a favor, this is very important, if you will be providing a, a public comment, please try to speak slowly and clearly. That way we can try to interpret what you are saying as fully as possible. Thank you. Now, to avoid any confusion, I will review the telephone sign-on instructions for Spanish speakers, excuse me, for the English speakers, and subsequently I, I will review the same pertinent information for our Spanish speakers. Through your telephone, you're, you will be dialing 602-666-0783 and enter meeting ID that will be 187 930 Four three five seven, and then pound. And once again, press pound when prompted for the attendee ID. I will now take this time to introduce myself to our Spanish-speaking audience. Muy buenas tardes a todos. Mi nombre es Mario Barajas, y junto con mi colega Elsie Duarte, estaremos sirviéndoles como intérpretes para la audiencia de presupuesto virtual de hoy. Les pedimos como favor, y es muy importante esto, si es que va a estar dando un comentario público, hable despacio y deténgase después de cada pocas oraciones para que podamos interpretar lo que esté diciendo de la manera más completa posible. Muchísimas gracias. Ahora les indicaré cómo acceder a la audiencia por teléfono en español, si es que no lo ha hecho. Desde sus teléfonos van a estar marcando el número de uh, teléfono 602-666-0783, introduzca el número de identificación o el ID de la reunión que viene siendo para el día de hoy 187-060-9671 y luego el número, el signo de número, o sea, el pound. Nuevamente introduzca el signo de número o el pound cuando se le solicite el número de identificación o el ID de asistente. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Mario. And now uh, it's my privilege to introduce uh, one of our hosts this evening, Councilwoman from District 1, Councilwoman O'Brien. Thank you so much, Ed. And I just want to say thank you to all the um, you here, the staff that have worked so hard on the budget, as well as um, thank the citizens who are participating today. Stakeholder involvement in our city is um, vital to making us a better city. So I look forward to hearing all the comments tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And also with us this evening, uh, Councilwoman Ansari from District 7. Councilwoman. Hello, thank you so much. Um, I'm very, very grateful to the city manager and the city staff for being here today. Excited to be hosting the last district uh, budget hearing. This is very, very important. So looking forward to hearing from constituents and um, very eager to uh, take on uh, feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you both. And thank you all who are joining us virtually. Uh, this year, we are, do, are doing virtual hearings on the City of Phoenix trial budget. Normally, we would have a published booklet like this for everyone. This year, however, it is um, available on phoenix.gov slash budget. It is an explanation of the trial budget, which is a proposal about how to spend the city's surplus funds for next year, uh, particularly in our general fund. So for 2021-2022, our fiscal year starts July 1st, we have estimated a surplus of about $150 million. About $100 million of that is one-time resources, which means that it's funds that should be spent on things that don't have an ongoing uh, nature. 
As part of that, we have resources to, um, and we have negotiated with our labor groups, uh, pay, uh, pay increase in order to keep our um, employment competitive and retain our quality, quality of employees. That is about 77% uh, of the budget, uh, of the, of the uh, surplus funds. That leaves about $35 million of resources to be allocated to uh, add city programs, improve city programs. The things that we've heard from council members, from community members, not just this year, but well into the past. So there are, there are items in this budget that are responding to things that have been brought up over the last several years because we have the resources to do that. The budget is, uh, the budget additions are broken into six major areas that include administrative accountability, climate change and heat resiliency, affordable housing, uh, dealing with uh, affordable housing and homelessness, uh, responding to uh, growth, and uh, the largest single area has to do with uh, public safety reform and responsiveness to the community. And there's one very large program in that, which is to add a community outreach program, a community response program, to assist people who are experiencing mental or behavioral crises with civilian, not sworn police response. And that's a big portion of this. So I invite you to go to phoenix.gov slash budget and review the information here. There, it is a wealth of resources. As I've said before, you can spend 15 minutes or 15 hours looking into the information in our budget. I do want to thank our budget and research staff. Amber Williamson, the budget and research director, is here. She's been for every budget hearing. All the multitude of budget and research and uh, other staff who are putting this hearing on virtually. Thank you for being here. And for all the city staff who are present or are, or are monitoring this virtually as well. The hearing is available on the Phoenix TV YouTube channel. Now it's being broadcast live, but it's also available afterwards. There are also minutes being taken and distributed to the council members every Thursday evening so that there's an opportunity for comments to be seen in that way as well. At this point, we're going to go to about an eight minute overview video. It is just a small portion of highlights of what's in here. Again, for full information, go to phoenix.gov slash budget. And with that, we'll roll the video overview. The City of Phoenix trial budget for fiscal year 2021-22, proposed by the Phoenix City Manager, is ready for public review and comment. The goal of this trial budget is to identify programs and services that build a better, more inclusive city for all. Phoenix has a long history of public budgeting, giving the community a voice in the future of our city by starting the public involvement much earlier than required. This year, due to the pandemic, public involvement will be virtual, but our goal is that we will provide even more opportunities for you to share your feedback. We'll host virtual budget community hearings between April 2nd and April 20th in both English and Spanish by council district and citywide for youth and for seniors. And this year, we've launched the Fund Phoenix Tool, an interactive way to share what's important to you when it comes to city programs and services. The law requires the city's budget to be balanced each year. And this year, we are happy to report a projected budget surplus of $153 million, made up of $98 million in one-time funds and $55 million in ongoing funding. This is thanks to Phoenix's continued strong economy and sound leadership by the mayor and city council and the city's strategic use of data to direct our efforts during the pandemic. City employees have stood on the front lines of the pandemic more than a year and counting to provide critical services and support to our residents and customers. Approximately 77% of the surplus in the 2021-22 trial budget is allocated to employee compensation, to continue to retain and recruit top talent, to provide the level of service our customers rely on to stay safe, healthy, and connected. 
$35 million is allocated to address important needs raised by the council and the community across six areas. Focus Area 1, Public Safety Reform and Responsiveness. More accountability, responsiveness, transparency, and trust is demanded from public safety programs. In this budget proposal, the city expands an already successful fire department program where trained mental health experts respond to 911 callers needing crisis health services. The expansion of the Community Assistance Program follows community and council requests for innovative ways to respond to crisis calls for service with mental health professionals rather than police officers. This not only strengthens health outcomes, but frees up police officers and firefighters to focus on public safety calls, reducing response times for our community. In addition, the budget adds other important public safety reforms by adding additional 911 operators, reducing wait time for police public records, improving police officer accountability through an improved human resource management system, and more comprehensive reports reporting of crime data. Focus Area 2. COVID response and resiliency. The city's navigated the COVID pandemic well, protecting employees and the community because we have relied on data and contracted public health experts to inform our efforts. We transitioned City Hall to an appointment only model. We also pivoted our programs and services to support the community in need of Wi Fi connectivity and access to emergency food support and virtual and curbside library services, requiring additional staffing and technology enhancements. Funding's required to continue these efforts through the pandemic. Focus Area 3, Climate Change and Heat Readiness. Climate change and the record-breaking heat in Phoenix call for investment in strategies to address the negative impacts on our residents, particularly our most vulnerable, including seniors and those in poverty and experiencing homelessness. The trial budget includes a new Office of Heat Response and Mitigation to focus these efforts, the addition of staff to plant and maintain trees, and advance the city's Cool Corridors program, all to meet the goals of the Tree and Shade Master Plan to double the tree canopy by 2030 and reduce the impact of heat. Focus Area 4, Affordable Housing and Homelessness. The city has a lack of affordable housing and more people experiencing homelessness than ever before. The city council approved a Housing Phoenix Plan and a Homeless Strategies Plan to find solutions to identify funding to increase and improve affordable housing units and to leverage federal funding and work with community partners to help those experiencing homelessness. Funding will provide staffing and programs to foster affordable housing developments on city-owned land and ensure the safety and security of those experiencing homelessness and the impacted neighborhoods and businesses. Focus Area 5, Building Community and Responding to Growth. There continues to be a great need to connect underserved communities to the economic benefits of our city's continued growth. We will fund programs and services that foster equitable education and recreation opportunities for youth and special needs populations, including the Phoenix Public Library's College Depot, clean and safe neighborhoods, and support for homegrown small businesses. Funding will support the growing needs at city parks and recreation centers, including the new Cesar Chavez Community Center, scheduled to open in the fall of 2021, Margaret T. Hans Park in downtown Phoenix, and Deem Hills Recreation Area in North Phoenix, as well as the successful inclusive recreation program for residents with special needs. We also propose an increase in funding for arts and historic preservation grants. Focus Area 6, Administrative Accountability. The city must continue to foster a diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment to live and work for residents and employees. To succeed, we propose to create the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. We'll also invest in technologies to support data-driven decision-making across city departments and to protect the city's IT systems from cybersecurity threats. 
enhance election processes, to increase engagement in city elections, and connect residents to library and park services. This has been just a taste of what you will find in the 2021-2022 City of Phoenix trial budget. We hope that you'll review additional details in the budget available online at phoenix.gov budget. Please share your feedback in whatever way works best for you at one of our 14 community budget hearings or by email at budget.research at phoenix.gov. Through our Fund Phoenix interactive tool, you can comment on the city's social media at City of Phoenix AZ on Facebook or Twitter and use the hashtag Phoenix Budget. Or call us at 602 262 4800. The city manager will present his proposed budget for 2021 22 to the Phoenix City Council on May 4th, 2021. The council's budget decision will take place on May 18th, 2021. Both meetings will be streamed online and on Phoenix TV. Thank you for being part of this important process. We look forward to hearing your ideas for this year's trial budget and the future of Phoenix. All right, welcome back to our uh, February, uh, February, excuse me, April 20th, 2021 trial budget hearing. At this point, we will hear from our speakers. We have 130 people signed up to speak. We will have two minutes for each speaker. And I'll turn it over to Sina Mathis to uh, introduce this part of the program and read those names. Sina. Thank you, Ed. We will now read the conduct we will now read the hearing conduct statement and then start calling the names of the speakers. Members of the public will have the opportunity to speak for up to two minutes on budget issues of interest or concern to them. Speakers must present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner, profane language, and personal attacks on members of the public, council members, or staff are not allowed. A person who violates these rules can lose their opportunity to continue to speak. The Arizona Open Meeting Law permits the City Council to listen to the comments, but prohibits Council members from discussing or acting on matters presented. Our first speaker this evening is Abdullah Tiramizi. Abdullah Tiramizi is not on the line. We will move to our next speaker, Sandra Netkin. Good evening, how are you? Fine, please proceed. Hi, so I wanted to um, throw in my um, opinion in this matter. I am in favor of the new crisis line um, for um, response to mental health, um, separate from law enforcement agencies. I do feel that this is important and should be definitely, it should definitely be allowed um, to, to um, come to life. I think this is a great idea for um, qualified and professional um, behavioral health experts to, um, to use their uh, holistic approach in regards to responding to people in crisis and um, with our mental health care system now, it's very important um, to have something that the community can feel comfortable with. And, and even especially now with COVID and everything that people are dealing with, uh, mental health is a very crucial thing and should be addressed um, through this program. And I urge you to um, give your give your support and um, create a, um, this program using the Arizona, Phoenix Arizona budget. And I do feel that it is a great program. Um, aside from having like the crisis response network and I do believe that people who um, are educated in the mental health care system can use 
um, can use their um, skills to diffuse the situation. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dan Penton. Hello, how are you? Great, please proceed. Um, my name is Dan Penton. I'm a resident of Levine. And I just want to speak into regards to open space and parks. Um, since we're on, you, know, you mentioned the topic of sustainability and resilience in the heat, urban heat island. Um, you know, the cool quarters project proposal that's coming forth um, to the city is, is one example, but I think in order to provide a more equitable environment for an equitable city for the residents, you need to build, you need to build the existing parks that, that have been, that have laid vacant or, and undeveloped for the better part of 15 to 20 years. You need to invest in, in building out the park at Samantha and 55th Avenue in Levine. There is no part, city park within miles of this vacant park site. And when developers donated the land, it was done under the promise that a city park would be built and therefore there were no HOA sponsored tot lots included in the design for adjacent neighborhoods. Um, also, you know, there's uh, one another vacant park at Levine Meadows next to Levine Meadows Elementary School. There's also another one next to Rogers Ranch Elementary School. And you've got the, you know, this, the regional park in Australia, in Australia Village as well. All of these parks have been promised and they've, they were made largely blighted properties and undeveloped. And these, these could be a huge source of revenue from the, for the city, but also a huge source of increased home value uh, for the residents that live next to these parks. Um, you, you're talking about, you know, intre increasing the shade canopy there is no a better place than to do that than along the street corridors leading up to these parks to create you know a walkable environment for residents. Um, you know these homes that are fronting city parks, you know, increase their home values be anywhere between eight to twenty percent, depending on the size of the park. But besides that, there's opportunities for you know growing you know harvestable trees, creating urban gardens, and. And you know, making this a more equitable community for the for those residents that bought these properties, with a promise of you know expectation of parks from the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Tara Loman Rojas. Tara is not on the line. We will move to Jessely Enriquez. Jessely is not on the line. We will move to Ryan Boyd. Good evening, honorable members. Uh, for the record, Ryan Boyd at 1069 West Taylor Street. Uh, thankful also to the honorable members here because uh, while I'm a resident of D7, I grew up over in Deer Valley, up near the uh, Deer Valley Park at I-17. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, so I'm going to move kind of quickly, and I apologize for that. But I did want to support a lot of the funding we have here for the arts grants and arts management, particularly public art maintenance. We talk a lot about installing public art here, but we don't end up paying for it in the long term, which can become problematic. Also very supportive of, of the adaptive reuse and historic preservation funding in the budget. Uh, increases to that are going to be very helpful. Long term, we need to talk about getting a city issued bond to really make a difference here, but it's still something that's necessary, especially as we continue to have development pressure and maintaining the history and culture of our great city. Um, on tree and shade, there's a lot of good things to highlight here. Here, the uh, cold corridors project is great and a good start for it. We've been uh, really trying to implement the tree and shade master plan for over 10 years. It was passed in 2010 and it needs this kind of ongoing funding and support. And that is something that I'm looking forward to seeing more of here in this budget, um, as well as the investment in the Office of Heat Readiness and Response. The tree administrator has been a huge gain from the work of countless volunteers from the Citizens Tree and Shade Committee onwards. Um, regarding homelessness and affordable housing, I think most of those are great items. They come from a long debate over the expansion of the Human Services Campus, which needed to be expanded, but also needs relevant support services to that neighborhood, which bears the brunt of uh, the services for the region. And the last thing I want to note here is on the roadway and safety um, action plans under pedestrian safety. It's good to have money for these kind of projects. 600,000 is 
good, but I fear that we're going to have a scenario where to improve driver comfort, we might sacrifice pedestrian safety. So I hope that actually goes to real pedestrian safety issues. Thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you again for having me. Thank you. Our next speaker is Denise Y. Sotelo. Hi, my name is Denise Iwan Sotelo Mejia, and I am a Phoenix native. I'm joining you all this fine evening to ask for our council and our public for transparency above anything. When you guys hear our pleas, uh, let's take a drive down any of these districts and you can see how Phoenix is putting their money to work, which is actually not good at all. I am here to demand that the money that we all work for and deserve but not be given to one of the deadliest police departments in the country. Uh, Phoenix police did not deserve or need $2 million of our money every single day to keep terrorizing and patrolling a city that they do not live in or actually care for. Um, our city in all districts would benefit from fixing up the streets, the potholes on the road, and actually free tra public transportation for the 40,000 people who depend on it every single day across all districts. Uh, if any of you guys have visited 51st Avenue in Miguel, Clearly, police is not the answer. Uh, my brothers and sisters would benefit from a rehabilitation facility to assist them with their mental health illnesses, not more patrol officers who just move them from one side of the street to the other. Uh, and lastly, last year there was $170,000 of out of all of our millions put into housing. And I feel like my brothers and sisters without a stable home or without any assistance um, would benefit from more money invested into this. We would benefit from investing into human lives and to actually things that could benefit. Uh, let's do things right. So I feel like hopefully this year at least we can move closer and not give $2 million a day to murders and beatings and yes to taking care of the people that actually live and love Phoenix. Thank you so much and I yield my time. Thank you. Tara Loman Rojas is now on the line. We will go to Tara Loman Rojas. Hi, I'm here. This is Tara. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Yeah, thank you. So I would like to welcome everyone to yet another episode of City Council Ignoring Constituents. Uh, we say defund the police and fund our community and you give more money uh, from funds meant for COVID relief to the Phoenix Police. When I say more, I mean 400 million. I bet Levine could use the 11 parks they were promised and with, with some of those funds or the trees in South Phoenix that could have been at, that have been asked for multiple times this week. Instead, you continue to take from the city's underfunded program to continue to underfund every other city program. So how about you take some money from the highest funded, funded white supremacist Phoenix police? And when I say some, I mean all of it. And for starters, 15 million from police to pay for new crisis program. I yield my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Anthony Sawyer. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Okay. So Phoenix residents have suffered greatly because of financial instability caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And if you, the council members, truly serve the people, then put less money towards expanding an already overfunded Phoenix Police Department and invest in community infrastructure like education, affordable housing, and rehabilitation centers. Better resources and making it easier for people to get what they need is what makes our community safer, not over-policing it. I also implore you to reject the additional 75 police department position. Phoenix Police Department is bloated in enough as it is, and they don't need more funding and staff. We need the millions of dollars allocated for the police department to go towards funding COVID relief in initiatives for the civilians of Phoenix. I agree with the motion of expanding a crisis response program as an alternative to contact and police. As such, we the members of uh, the Phoenix community demand that 15 million be moved from the policing budget to fund expansion and better our crisis response program. We also demand funding for free transportation and low barrier shelters for the houseless population here in Phoenix. Over 7,000 houseless people are members of our community and there are not enough shelters to meet all their needs. Funding these community initiatives would give thousands of people easier access to the things that they need to live successful lives, much more than expanding the police force here in Phoenix could ever do. 
Finally, I urge you to reject this budget until the process for memoranda of understanding negotiations is fully transparent and public. I yield my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jennifer Hernandez. Jennifer, are you on the line? Uh, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, Please, proceed. You. Awesome. Please proceed. Awesome. Okay. Um, good afternoon, public servant Yasamin Ansari. I stand here today as a young mother, organizer, and resident of District 7. I have been coming to these meetings and asking for the same demands since I was 18. I will be 23 soon and nothing has changed. Even after you all knew that Phoenix Police Department was the deadliest one in the country, you choose to continue to let young people of color die at the hands of police. Police will not solve my problems. Police will not take my child to school. Police will not give me a job when I am in need of it. Police will not solve homelessness. Instead, you all make policies so they can criminalize these things. That, so you can criminalize not having a home, not having a job, and incarcerate us when we have to hustle our way out of poverty. You criminalize the fact that we have shitty transportation inside us when we have to jaywalk to catch the bus because we can't afford losing a job. With that being said, um, if more than 50% of our money didn't go to police, we would have such a better system that would actually help us be healthy and happy and successful. I am here today as a young mother of a six-year-old daughter to remind you again and again that the Phoenix police arrest thousands of people every year for marijuana positions and lately even kill them for minor positions or minor crimes. Not that marijuana is legal, arrest should decrease by several thousand arrests per year, meaning that you should cut the number of officers employed by the department, reallocate that money to free public transportation, bus only lanes, resources for rehabilitation and mental health services, and support with low barrier shelter and housing support. I yield my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Brenda Montoya. Yes. Brenda Buenas. Montoya. Sí, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Yes, good afternoon. Es Brenda Montoya y soy la presidenta de Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Brenda Montoya, Montoya and I am the president of the uh, Neighborhood Association Estrella Village. Pertenezco al Distrito 7 en Estrella Village. I belong to District 7 in Estrella Village. Este vecindario abarca desde la 59 Avenida y 75 Avenida. This uh, neighborhood covers between 59th Avenue and 75th Avenue. Desde la Roosevelt hasta la Fillmore. From Roosevelt, Roosevelt all the way to Fillmore. Es un placer poder participar en esta reunión del concilio. It's a pleasure to be able to participate in this council meeting. De tal manera que es mi deseo aprovechar la oportunidad. In such a way that it's uh, my desire to present this opportunity. De darle la bienvenida a la concejal Yasamin Anasari. To give a welcome to Councilwoman Ansari Yasamin. Y al mismo tiempo felicitarla por formar parte del Consejo de la Ciudad de Phoenix. And at the same time, to uh, give her the welcome and congratulate her for becoming a member of the city council. Aprovecho la ocasión para extenderle una invitación. And I take a, want to take this time to uh, appreciate the passion for this on this occasion here. Para participar en una reunión con los miembros de la asociación Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association. And I uh, invite you to participate with the members of the Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association. La comunidad tiene muchas necesidades, entre ellas un centro comunitario y un circulador. And the community has many needs, uh, amongst them a circulator bus and a community center. Muchas gracias y buenas tardes. Thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Thank you. Our next speaker is Margarita Ramirez. Siguiente orador. Margarita Ramirez. Sí, buenas tardes, ¿me escuchan? 
y a la creación de un pequeño medio. Sí, sigo escuchando, señora. Sí, buenas tardes a todos y a todos los miembros del concilio. Mi nombre es Margarita Ramírez. Prosiga, señora. Ah, soy miembro activo de la Asociación Nuevo Si ¿Sí se puede, del distrito 7, con código postal 85043, Estrella Villar. Este día quiero hacer una petición para hacer un centro comunitario para nuestra comunidad y también podríamos fomentar un mercado local los fines de semana para promover el desarrollo local en la comunidad y además un centro que contribuya a promover la importancia del voluntariado y, pro, y promover a los jóvenes, a la comunidad y a la economía. Es todo de mi parte, gracias por su tiempo, esperando nos apoyen. Gracias, señora. My name is Margarita Ramirez, and I live in District 7, zip code 85043, Estrella Village. And today, I'm here to petition for a community center. And also, I would like to request that we promote a mercado on the weekends where we can uh, promote the solicitation of volunteers, like for instance, for young peepers, uh, young people, and that way they can add to the community with their help. And I just ask for the support in this project here, and that's all that I want to speak of. Speak of. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Elizabeth Payan. Siguiente orador es Elizabeth Payan. Sí. Sí, señora, adelante. Oh, buenas tardes. Eh, mi nombre es Elizabeth Payan. Pertenezco a la asociación Si se puede Neighborhood del Distrito 7, Estrella Village, que está ubicada por la Roosevelt y la Fillmore. Está más o menos por la 59 avenida hasta la 75 avenida. Es tal 85043. En nuestra comunidad existen apartamentos residenciales para personas de la tercera edad. Casa Pedro Ruiz. Aquí habitan aproximadamente 65 personas y la parada de autobús más cercana queda a, queda a media milla. Ellos usan el transporte público para hacer sus compras y caminar de regreso a su residencia. Con las bolsas de víveres es agotador, especialmente durante el calor, cuando las temperaturas pueden llegar hasta los 120 grados. Por lo tanto, solicitamos que se instale una parada del circulero justo enfrente de Casa Pedro Ruiz. Esto, gracias, gracias, señora. A usted, gracias. Good afternoon. My name is Elizabeth Payan, and I live in zip code 85043. I belong to the uh, Association of uh, Si Se Puede, Neighborhood Village. That is uh, Estrella Village. And so that is between Roosevelt and Fillmore, between 59th Avenue and 75th Avenue. And so our village, uh, there's some apartments there, they're called Casa Pedro Ruiz, and these are apartments for the elderly, for, um, people that uh, uh, have a need. So there's about 65 people there, and they use uh, public transportation. The nearest bus stop for them is about a half a mile away. And so they do use this uh, public transportation, but it's a little too far for them, especially when they have to carry that half mile. They have to carry their groceries in, in their hands. And with the heat, especially in the summertime, it can get up to 120 degrees. So what I'm requesting is that we have this circulator bus available to them. 
And so that's all I'm asking is a bus stop that would be closer for the residents of Pedro, Casa Pedro Ruiz. I thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Laura Lopez. Laura, are you on the line? We'll go to the next speaker. Angelica Gostelum. We'll proceed to the next speaker. Joel Copeland. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank, can you hear me? I'm sorry, yes, please proceed. Sure. Now, first of all, I would like to thank the city manager and all the city council members and all the staff who's worked so hard for this whole month, listening and responding to the voices of the constituents of our great city. Um, I've attended at least 10 of these meetings. And you've heard our proposal about the Friends of the Museum of Arizona Artists concerning the Carnegie Library at 1101 West Washington, which is currently unused for the city empty to repurpose this beautiful building and adjoining park into the Museum of Arizona Artists and Sculpture Garden. You can just imagine how opening this building as an art museum for Arizona artists would enhance the Capitol Mall, draw people from, our, from all over our city, visitors from everywhere, and it'd be a wonderful uh, historic part of our town for them to learn from through the arts and programs of art appreciation, hands-on instruction, and a creative process that would serve both young and old. You know, it can go on and on. Now, I just wanted to tell you, the idea of this museum came to me after my wife, Joanne Lowney, was sitting sketching the library when a worker walked by her. She engaged him about the building and found out that he was employed by the Department of Administration. I called the Department of Administration and told them the idea. And they liked the idea and said I would have to call the Legislative Council. It was owned by the city, the property was owned by the city, but it was leased to the Legislative Council, the state entity. I called the Legislative Council and they too thought it was a worthy project, but that I had to call the, the Assistant City Manager, which I did. And I was informed that they would get me a cost estimate of the current overhead to provide a budget. And then the holidays came with the pandemic and we never received the information. But why does the Legislative Council want to lease these grounds and do nothing with it? The building is just sitting there. So we are seeking pre-development funding from the surplus to help raise the capital necessary to sustain our development plan, which includes private donations, public grants, admission fees, and other funding resources. We will need the current expenses that the ground and building incur in order to develop a reasonable budget. We can't start raising funds until we know the disposition of the building. Could we just take over the lease from the state or how is this going to work? Um, could you please help us make the most worthy project come to reality? And uh, I'm sorry, so nice to meet you and I'll be getting in touch with you. Thank you, we'll go to our next speaker. Corima. Sami, sorry, Samanega Ochoa. Does not appear to be on the line. We'll go to our next speaker. Paula Valencia. Paula Valencia, are you on the line? Se encuentra en la línea Paola Valencia. We'll go to our next speaker, Brenda Bustamante. Seguiremos al siguiente orador, Brenda Bustamante. Brenda, are you on the line? Se encuentra en la línea, Brenda. We'll proceed to our next speaker. I apologize. We'll go back to Paula Valencia. Are you on the line? Disculpe, vamos a regresar nuevamente con Paola Valencia. ¿Se encuentra la línea Paola? 
Yes. Buenas tardes, Adela mi nombre es Adelante, señora. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Paola Valencia. Soy miembro de Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association. Pertenezco al Distrito 7. Mi código postal es 85043. Eh, bienvenidos, a, bienvenidos a todos, a, principalmente a, a nuestra concejal Yasemín. Mi petición para hoy es que en nuestra comunidad se requieren de topes y un medidor de velocidad y no contamos con, con fondos. Um, es una necesidad porque es un problema de seguridad, ya que tenemos la escuela Sunridge y el parque del mismo nombre y los carros pasan a muy alta velocidad. Muchas gracias y esperemos que, que nuestras peticiones sean escuchadas. Y nuevamente, bienvenida. Gracias. Good afternoon, my name is Paola Valencia, and I am also a member of the Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association. I live in District 7, zip code 85043, and I welcome everybody. And especially a warm welcome to our new councilwoman, Yasamin. I'd like to talk about speed bumps in, in our neighborhood, and being able to post uh, some devices so they can control the speed limit in our neighborhoods. It's a very big safety concern for us, and so that's something that we do need in our neighborhood. There's a school that's called Sunridge, and then right in front there's a park by the same name. The cars just, just go by very fast. And so I thank you for listening to this request, and I hope that I get heard. And once again, welcome, and thank you. Thank you. Is our speaker Brenda Bustamante on the line? Se encuentra en la línea Brenda Bustamante. Sí. Buenas tardes. Yes. Sí, se escucha. Sí, señora. Buenas tardes. Eh, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Brenda Bustamante. Pertenezco aquí se puede Neighborhood Association, Distrito 7, Estrella Ville. Código postal 85043. Muchos de los habitantes de Estrella Village no contamos con el transporte privado y nos vemos en la necesidad de hacer uso de transporte público. Esto es muy incómodo porque tenemos que esperar largos periodos de tiempo entre cada autobús. Esto es un serio problema durante el verano extremo en cine y además representa un riesgo para las personas que tienen hijos pequeños y para los adultos mayores. Muchas de las paradas no tienen sombras ni bancas para los usuarios. Aumentar el uso de transporte público beneficiaría a, contar, a contrarrestar los efectos negativos de, cambio, de cambios climáticos. Asimismo, agradecer el espacio que nos brindan para exponernos en la, exponer las necesidades de nuestra comunidad. Muchas gracias y muy amable. Gracias, señora. My name is Brenda Bustamante. I also live in the Estrella Village and I belong to the Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association. I'm here to talk about the public transportation. A lot of us are deprived from having our own private transportation and it's very in inconvenient to be waiting these long intervals for these buses especially in the summertime in the extreme heat. It's a risk not, all, not only to families that have young kids, but also to the elderly. And so I would like to petition that at these bus stops, we add some shade to them because they don't have any shade. And I also would want to talk about the uh, negative effects of the climate change. And it's just so hot that we are exposed 
to this heat. And so I just have request to tend to the needs of our community. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Elida Urias. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, señora. ¿Sí me escuchan? Sí, la escuchamos. Adelante. Muy buenas tardes, miembro del concejal. Mi nombre es Elida Urias y pertenezco a la asociación Si se puede Neighborhood Association. Estamos en el distrito número 7 en Estrella Village. Nuestro código postal es 85043. Nuestra comunidad está solicitando tener un circulador para las personas que no contamos con un vehículo propio, porque tenemos niños menores y existen apartamentos residenciales para personas de la tercera edad. Y durante el verano esto nos sería un riesgo por las altas temperaturas. También estamos exigiendo un centro comunitario y tener talleres educativos para personas de todas las edades. Esto sería un beneficio para nuestra comunidad. Nuestra comunidad se encuentra entre 75 Avenida y 59 Avenida, entre Fillmore y Roosevelt. Espero nos tomen en cuenta. Muchas gracias y que pasen buenas noches. Gracias, señora. Good afternoon. My name is Elida Urias, and I want to wish you a very good afternoon. I want to speak to the council members, My, and I'd like to uh, mention that I do also live in the Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association, District 7, zip code 85043. We do need this community circulator. There's many of us that don't have a vehicle, and the families with minor children, the elderly where there's apartments, they just would really benefit from the circulator. They're at risk, especially in the summertime with all the heat. And also, we need a community center, a place where they have workshops for all kinds of people that uh, can get educated, receive all kinds of training. Our district uh, covers between 75th Avenue and 59th Avenue and between Fillmore Avenue and Roosevelt. I hope that you take us into consideration. I thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ana Maria Hernandez. Siguiente orador es Ana Maria Hernandez. Ana Maria Hernandez, are you on the line? Se encuentra en la línea Ana Maria Hernandez. Sí, buenas tardes. Yes, good afternoon. Yo pertenezco a... Disculpe, señora, no se le escucha. Sí, buenas tardes. Sí, buenas tardes. Ahora sí la escuchamos. Adelante. Mi nombre es Ana María Hernández. Pertenezco a Estrella Village, a la asociación Si Se Puede, del código número... Ah, 85043. Eh, está, estoy aquí abogando por mi comunidad ah, eh, porque pertenezco a la asociación Si Se Puede. Eh, nosotros en esta comunidad tenemos muchas necesidades. De, en prioridad necesitamos un centro comunitario, un circulador, porque ah, los, hay muchos residentes que no, no manejan y necesitamos este trasladarnos a tiendas y lugares como supermercados que vendan comidas 
saludables, porque aquí a nuestro alrededor no tenemos tiendas uh, de comida saludables. Entonces ellos batallan mucho, todas estas personas que no manejan. Y también este, queremos pedir al centro comunitario exigirlo más que nada porque nosotros distribuimos despensas en la comunidad y eh, son productos a veces lácteos que no, que no este, duran mucho fuera de lo, de lo frío y necesitamos que nos apoyen, que nos apoyen con el centro comunitario para involucrar a las familias y fomentar en la unión familiar e involucrar a los jóvenes para evitar que caigan en drogas, que caigan en el alcoholismo y así también eh, involucrar a todos los padres de familia en esta educación, traer educaciones para clases de inglés, clases de GD, eh, para todos estos, tener todos estos talleres en nuestra comunidad. Muchísimas gracias, mucha, muy, muchas gracias por haberme escuchado y esperando ser escuchados en nuestras peticiones. Gracias, señora. My name, my name is Ana Maria Hernandez, and I belong to the Si Se Puede Neighborhood Association, Estrella Village, District 7, zip code 85043. And I would like to advocate for the Si Se Puede Neighborhood. We have lots of needs, a community center, a circulator. There's lots of residents that don't drive. We need a supermarket that provides healthy food. There isn't anything like that that's nearby. There's many people that don't drive, and so we need a circulator. A community center, we need this community center. It would, it would enable families to be united, both young and old, uh, uh, older people. That way we can involve the youngsters, uh, avoid them getting into drugs, alcoholism. We need to involve these families maybe by getting some workshops, some English classes uh, and workshops to get their GEDs. And so we need these types of programs. And thank you for listening, and I hope that you listen to my petition. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Linda Abeg. Vamos a hacer un cambio de intérprete. Un momentito, por favor. Hello? Please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Zerker and council members. I appreciate all the opportunities that we've been given to share input on how we want our tax dollars to be spent during this budget hearing process, as well as to learn from our neighbors about what our city needs. I want the development and growth in Phoenix to be balanced and responsible as we move forward with things like a mental health response unit and adequate police staffing. Let's also prioritize programs and services that reduce the need for those emergency responses in the first place, like the prior commenters were saying. As we look at affordable housing, where are those people, the people in those developments going to work and where will they go to school? How will they get there? Will there be a place for them to walk outside and for their kids to play? especially as we want our city to be equitable, we need to make sure everyone has access to healthcare facilities, school campuses, and parks. We need you as leaders to be proactive in this planning instead of reactive. We cannot always wait for private developers to provide these services and amenities. Right now, many of us have to drive quite a ways for basic services like doctors, community colleges, and parks. And comments in this budget process have shown that public transportation is not always readily available. Please make sure that services are not dis that services are distributed throughout the valley and not just provided in higher income and more politically advantageous areas. I live in Levine, and while we're getting thousands of homes and multifamily housing, we are still not getting the amenities to support more increases in people. Please prioritize parks like the one at 55th Avenue in Samantha that would, for the first time, put a park within walking distance of so many Levine residents. Please stop relying on HOAs to provide park space. For many reasons, this does not work, including lack of insurance for that level of use and old zoning that relied on unfulfilled park development to provide park spaces. The city of Phoenix acquired the land and collected the impact fees for construction because this park at 55th Avenue, Samantha and others were needed for responsible development in Phoenix. Please include the 156,000 in maintenance costs to the 2021-22 budget so that this booming area of Levine can be included in the basic level of service that should be provided to City of Phoenix residents. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Frank Denver. Are you on the line? 
Frank is not on the line. We will move to our next speaker, Lin Ling Li. Are you on the line? Yes. Good we, evening. We can My hear you. Please proceed. Ling. Good evening. My name is Lin Ling Li. I'm the commissioner of Phoenix Office of Art and Culture. I live in Phoenix for 38 years. I sincerely appreciate this year, City of Phoenix increased $200,000 trial budget for Phoenix Office of Art and Culture. It consists of $110,000 for grants, $60,000 for public art maintenance, and $30,000 for support use professional development and community programs. And it is important that this increase is also included in the final budget. Art and culture are very important. Art and culture bring us beauty, peace, harmony, understanding, appreciation, and unity. Art and culture also have economic impact as well, including creating jobs and business opportunities for Phoenix. Uh, please include these $200,000 trial budgets in the final budget. Thank you and congratulations to newly elected Councilman, Councilwoman O'Brien and Councilwoman Ansari. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Richard De Uarte. Richard, are you on the line? I'm on the line. Thank you. Uh, my name is Richard De Uarte. I've lived in Phoenix for 42 years, even before they had a city council district system. Uh, I'm currently a member of the Phoenix Historic Preservation Commission. First of all, I want to congratulate and welcome the two new council members of the city uh, is in need your energy and your commitment. Uh, I, first, I specifically wanted to endorse the proposed $200,000 funding for a residential uh, rehabilitation grant program for historic homes, which is included in the city manager's uh, budge, budget as a recurring uh, expenditure uh, in for historic preservation. Uh, such a competitive grant program uh, has been part of the city. It was included in uh, three bond issues and adopted by voters. Um, by now, those funds have uh, run out and been depleted, but yet the need for residential rehab is just as pressing, uh, particularly in some of the older uh, historic districts, Roosevelt, Woodland, Garfield. Uh, the, the program is competitive, Projects are, are reviewed by a panel and then submitted to the Historic Preservation Commission. The funding and the projects will make a difference uh, in our city. Uh, finally, let me express my uh, appreciation to the mayor and council and the city manager for the for steering the city past through the uh, through the past few years. Frankly, uh, in my opinion, Mr. Zerker has assembled assembled a very good team, one that will rival uh, Marvin Andrews and Ray Bladeen and Jack Pevlin in the halcyon days of Phoenix. Good night. Thank you. Our next speaker is Savina Bavoset. Savina, are you on the line? I am. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. So first, I'd like to take a moment to congratulate Councilwomen uh, O'Brien and Asari for their um, recent roles. Congratulations to you guys. Um, also, thank you for the opportunity to take a moment to speak um, about what is important to us. Um, I will keep this short and sweet because I know we have a lot of speakers tonight, um, but I'm on here to speak in support of adding the maintenance costs for the park on 55th and Samantha Way. Um, and reason behind it, not just the fact that there are no city parks 
um, in this area within a three mile radius um, in this area that has a lot of growth, um, but also supporting um, the health and wellness of our community and the need to have a park and, and a place for our children to get out and play, um, especially with what they've been faced with um, over the last year and a half with the pandemic. So thank you for your time. Have a great evening. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Amy Magelio. Amy, are you on the line? Hello? We can hear you, can please hear proceed. Me? Okay, so on Saturday, I detailed the story of my sexual assault related mental health crisis that resulted in Phoenix PD being called and described in detail how for many sexual assault or assault survivors, in addition to other groups who are traumatized by police or groups of aggressive men, police can function to escalate a mental health call, not to help it. It's no mistake that mental health calls are 16 times more likely to end in quote, officer involved shooting, unquote. I'm here today as a stakeholder in the sense that I have been on one of these calls in Phoenix. And today I'd like to talk about the importance of stakeholder involvement in the two to three year build out process, but not stakeholders who look like me. BIPOC stakeholders, the most vulnerable stakeholders. Only those who have suffered the trauma and humiliation of a mental health serv call service by PPD directly or family of those who have knows what the program really needs, but the city is often moved by empirical evidence, not emotion. So I beg you to only vote for a community advocacy program that involves community ad hoc committee for oversight. And I'd like to remind you empirically that every city that has set out to do this and succeeded stressed stakeholder ownership and involvement from the very first legislative step. Eugene, Portland, Austin, Denver, each of these cities adopted stakeholder focused legislation and programs. And when Tim, the director of the White Bird Clinic in Eugene that operates Kahoot, met with um, NOCAP, GLP, and District 8, he told us that the many cities that have tried and failed these programs, what they were missing every time was community driven process. Let's not make this another giant waste of time like OET was last year and heed the advice of the original clinic from the longest lasting, most successful cap. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. Nobody running a personal cor or corporate budget just sets aside millions of dollars with no plan in mind. So there has to be a plan. And I'm begging um, council members, please, as you vote, to only be willing to vote yes on a plan that involves a community ad hoc committee for oversight. And then also doesn't crosstalk with ICE or police um, and independence totally and operates totally independently um, from the police department. I yield my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Raymond Wong. Raymond, are you on the line? Yes, thank you, council members. I wanna thank everyone for having the public speak here. I uh, grew up in Chandler, which is a suburb of Phoenix. And growing up in Chandler, uh, they bussed us in as youth to downtown Phoenix and took us to a special place called Heritage Square. Heritage Square was basically the only thing in the 80s when they brought me down there. It sparked my imagination and it made me fall in love with Phoenix. Uh, and multiple times I have attempted to move away from Phoenix, one of them being to Chicago. And it wasn't the heat that brought me back to Phoenix. It wasn't the excellent streets, which by the way, thank you, they are excellent. It was the Heritage Square. And it was the inspiration that I felt at that park that brought me back to the city of Phoenix and had me live in downtown. I lived in downtown when nobody else did. I used to say it was me and maybe a couple other uh, people on the corner uh, just screaming about how great the city is, but only I was the only one living there. In a sense, growing up, or in Phoenix, it was known initially as, why would you live down there? Why would you live in the central city? I stressed for nearly 20 years how important I think it is that Phoenix have a strong central core. That core has developed and I'm happy to be part of it. I currently sit on the board of directors representing Heritage Square, which I've been involved with since my youth. I come to the city to say, thank you for your support of Heritage Square and say, please, we need your continued support. After 40 years, the buildings are showing their age and we definitely need reinvestment in those historic structures. We are committed to telling the full heritage of Phoenix, not just current mission. If you can help us by funding us so we can continue to tell the full story of Phoenix, all of its, the beginning, the ancient history, and all of the history in between, not just the Eurocentro history. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Carrie Carlisle. Carrie, are you on the line? 
Yes, good evening, everyone. My name is Kari Carlisle, and I'm the executive director for Heritage Square Foundation. Heritage Square includes the Rawson House Museum and several more historic buildings that house our visitor center and museum shop, offices, and restaurants. I'm here to speak in support of additional funding as proposed to Parks and Rec for the specialized staff, trees, and shade projects. Heritage Square is just one of the many places throughout the city that will benefit from this funding as many of our trees are dead or dying. I also support the budget increase for the Office of Arts and Culture to expand their grants program. With arts and culture organizations in economic distress, including our own, more funding is needed to support them on an ongoing basis. Finally, I especially want to support the Capital Improvements Program. Funding through this program will help mitigate the deterioration of the historic buildings at Heritage Square. This funding is critical to address major repair needs identified in the Rawson House and the other buildings at Heritage Square. You have a great picture of Rawson House in your budget video, but the city must take better care of this public treasure. Please continue to increase funding for parks and for arts and culture so that we can keep Heritage Square in good repair, provide educational programs, and be a safe and meaningful gathering place for the community. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ishmael Morales. Ishmael, are you on the line? Yes, good evening, and thank you for allowing me to speak with all of you. Welcome aboard to uh, Council Members O'Brien and Ansari, and thank you for being here tonight as well, and congratulations on your recent election. My name is Ismael Morales, and I am currently a member of the Phoenix Arts and Culture Commission. While I do proudly live in District 3, we advocate for the arts for the entire city of Phoenix as a whole. I am very passionate for the arts in the city, and this defines how we are as a city with diversity and unity. I appreciate our council members that have supported our mission in the arts in the city. I want to thank in particular to my councilwoman, Deborah Stark. I hope that we get the same commitments from council members of Brian and Ansari, and hopefully we uh, can connect. Um, if the arts thrive, we all thrive as a city and adding beauty with supporting our local artists. I also appreciate the help that the Office of Arts and Culture has received in helping local artists with COVID-19 federal dollars during the pandemic. This year in the budget, in the trial budget, there is a proposal to increase of $200,000 for the arts. That includes, and as was mentioned before by one, one commissioner, uh, it's $110,000 to support uh, local artist grants, $60,000 for maintaining our public art displays, and $30,000 to support youth, youth's arts programs, professional development, and community programs. This is great news for our city, and our citizens will appreciate it a lot, especially when the arts do serve as a way for good social economic recovery from the city from the pandemic. More than anything, to support public art, which shows the beauty that is our city of Phoenix, and this is shown in different structures, monuments, and of course, our beloved Sky Harbor International Airport, which is pretty much like an art display in itself uh, to show to our travelers. I am asking for the city Phoenix City Council to support this increase within the budget, as mentioned before, and other budget hearings, and here I am again, uh, and to support the mission of having the arts local and local artists in our city for, for our public benefit. Thank you for your. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cynthia Garcia. Cynthia, are you on the line? I, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Hi, my name is Cynthia Y. Garcia. I am an advocate for adults with developmental disabilities and serious mental illness. I am opposing the city's version of a crisis assistance program. The projected program does not aim to benefit our community. We the people want no cap, a neighborhood organized crisis assistance program to provide support and aid during a time of crisis. We want a separate entity from our first current responders. We want community oversight because we all know the lack of transparency that comes from the city and its first responders. We don't want the involvement of ICE or police and no criminalization of those without homes. People should feel safe asking for help without worrying about deportation, jail time, fines, or death. Under no cap, nonviolent calls will be dispatched to counselors, medics, professionals who are trained in de-escalation, our Article 9 and prevention and support. According to the Phoenix Police Research Unit, last year there were over 117,000 nonviolent calls dispatched to officers. 
with no cap responding to these calls, our demands for this department to be fully funded from the police budget is evidently realistic. This program means a great deal to me. I have a family member with an undiagnosed mental illness who was homeless and apprehended for trespassing, meaning they were seeking shelter. This person was unarmed, nonviolent, and was still taken to jail for several weeks. When they were released from jail, they were in the same situation on the street and seeking shelter. This is only one of many similar stories. When will this end? This cycle has to end. This surplus belongs to the community. This is our money. We elected you into your positions. So listen to our voices, uphold your duties, and serve your community. I yield my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Andrea Golfin. Thank you very much. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for providing this platform for public comment. Um, in the last uh, city of Phoenix budget and uh, the 2021 budget, nearly three of every four dollars of the general fund was devoted to police and public safety. What does that say about our priorities as a community? To me, it says that our city leadership puts more value on policing our community than investing in and improving our community. On the one hand, Phoenix police are one of the deadliest police forces in the United States. On the other hand, Phoenix police are tasked with too many duties. Underprepared officers with deadly weapons should not be responsible for handling mental health crises, homelessness, traffic violations, and other routine matters. It is not fair to expect them to be all things for the city. It's time to divest funds from the Phoenix police and imagine a brighter future, a future where mental health, housing, job placement, and other community resources receive ample funding. The citizens of Phoenix demand that the city council says no to 75 new civilian positions for the Phoenix police. We demand that $10 million be moved from the Phoenix police crime suppression squad and be distributed to community services. We demand more COVID relief for Phoenicians and we demand $15 million be moved from the police budget to the, a new crisis response program. Phoenix communities demand funding for free transportation, rehabilitation services, and low barrier shelter and housing support. We also demand that the budget is rejected until the process for MOU negotiations with the Phoenix police and their union are made public. What is the Phoenix police department trying to hide? These are our tax dollars. I plead with you to start truly investing in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Alejandra Cervantes. Yeah. Alejandra is not on the line. We'll move to our next speaker, Miros. Dominezan, Dominezan, Miros Dominezan is not on the line. We will move to our next speaker, Stephanie Gentry. Stephanie, are you on the line? Stephanie does not appear to be on the line. We will move to our next speaker, Claire Goldberg. Claire, are you on the line? Claire does not appear to be on the line. We will move to our next speaker, Katrina Warrener. Katrina, are you on the line? Katrina does not appear to be on the line. We will move to our next speaker, on Nicole Rodriguez. Hi, good evening. Let me know if you could hear me. Yes, we can, please proceed. Thank you. Um, I wanted to thank the, the councilwomen today for, um, you know, their service and also all the speakers who actually have called in today um, <clears throat> as a resident of Phoenix for about 20 years now. I've had the luxury of being able to um, serve on different boards without, within uh, the city of Phoenix and volunteer a lot of time. But what I've heard tonight are people that don't necessarily have that luxury and they're pleading with you for a lot of resources that our basic needs. So 
I, I just want to echo their concerns. It wasn't my purpose in speaking tonight, but I, I am very um, concerned about those topics and I will be following up through those boards I serve on that do relate directly to what they are asking for. And um, I should mention I am from District 4 um, and I do serve on the Urban Heat Island and Tree and Shade Subcommittee of the Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission, as well as the Encanto Village Planning um, Committee and in the past on the Block Watch Grant committee and <clears throat> a common theme with all those is the need for um, strong leadership and those community um, uh, opportunities for the public to speak on concerns with this heat island and even with our planning and development um, issues. So I would like to say that with the climate change and heat readiness initiatives, they're desperately in need and we're past due. As you heard that we're way past due by more than a decade. And um, there's opposite opposition from some council members on these topics, but just to put it out there and be transparent, we have been discussing this topic, particularly to tree and shade uh, for the past three years. And so it's a waste of our taxpayer money to uh, now be jumping into the conversation and feigning ignorance on this budget item as if they were unaware of it and it's inefficient use of our funds. It is gravely needed, especially for vulnerable communities, but also the affluent communities are impacted by heat island um, and heat related illnesses. So I wanted to urge the city um, members that are here elected, not so much staff, to please hear out what we are talking about today as far as health and quality of life and make sure the resources are put where they need it. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Our next speaker is Samuel Merton. Samuel, are you on the line? Hi. Hi, I'm Samuel Merton, and I'm part of the Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program Coalition. So, even before the city budget came to light, even before dates were set, and before it was public that the city manager was including funds for a type of crisis assistance program, um, our coalition, we were out in Phoenix researching, talking to various communities, talking to successful programs around the nation, trying to figure out how we can successfully get a Cahoots type program started in Phoenix. So when we saw there were funds set aside for a similar program in this budget, it was surprising. It's exciting to hear, and there were some misunderstandings about some of our questions in previous meetings. We understand that there is $50 million set aside no matter what for this program, but the duty that we felt to come in and ask these questions comes from a place of caring. It comes from a moral duty to make sure that vulnerable people are not taken advantage of if they're just trying to get help. We did not know from the description of this program that it would be working with police. We did not know from the description the city's mindset on if this program would be another means to incarcerate. So I'm glad to hear that through these meetings, it appeared to lead that everyone is on the same page. My critique on this trial budget would be that if these clarifying comments were included in the description of this CAP program section in the budget, we would not have had to come into every meeting and ask these questions. So I'm asking for a more in-depth description of this CAP program to be included in the finalized budget. I'm asking for you to set a standard right away that this program, in the program description, that the mindset will be to listen to the most vulnerable and underserved communities in this program and serve as an alternative to police for navigable calls. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Raymond Gomes or Raymond Gomez. Yes, good evening. I can hear you. Please proceed. Thank you. Good evening, Council. I'm here tonight and want to speak on behalf of my community, the Paseo Point community in Lavina, Arizona. I've been living here for six years. When I moved here, it was a new build. This was the last uh, section that was being built in this community. I'm at the corner of 55th Avenue and Dobbins, more or less. Uh, when they were first building, when we first came to get the property, they told us that the 202 was going to be built, a school, and a park. At this point, the 202 is up and running. It's bringing a lot of 
businesses here, a lot of houses south of Dobbins. It was all farmland and it's now being uh, built currently. So you can see the exponential growth that it's uh, Lavina is experiencing here. Uh, the school is thriving. It's Paseo Point Elementary. Right across, there's an empty lot that is the eyesore of the community. Uh, two weeks or three weeks ago, I believe, uh, I was driving out of the neighborhood and saw they had an event, a Play 60 event, where they had a lot of kids, uh, parents, and people participating. The field of the school was jam-packed with kids, parents, and I guess the people that are running the Play 60 event. Uh, if you saw that, you would see that they, if that park would have been built, they could have used that uh, park to expand to the park and have a better quality of uh, experience for all the people participating. I um, just want to make it aware that uh, the park of 55th Avenue and Samantha Way is uh, greatly needed. Uh, I've been here six years, but apparently it's been 14 years in the making and it's still nothing but weeds. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you. Our next speaker is Beverly Solis Jones. Beverly, are you on the line? Hi, my name is Beverly Solis Jones. I'm a resident of Phoenix and I'm calling on all my council members to reject our current city budget. As it stands, taxpayers, your constituents, and community members do not have full visibility to MOU negotiations. Continuing to let police negotiations happen behind closed doors is simply unacceptable, especially when Phoenix PD is statistically one of the deadliest police forces in the United States. Now, this is a trigger warning for those who have experienced police brutality. In a 2020 press conference for the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association plea, which is the largest police union in Phoenix, the president, Michael Britt London, is on video stating, if you ban chokeholds and I'm punching them in the head over and over again, and it doesn't work, then I guess I'll have to shoot them in the head. Now, this was a response to banning chokeholds in the wake of the murder of George Floyd by a police officer using a chokehold. It would be especially concerning that you council members would approve increases to Phoenix PD and prevent the public from having visibility in future police budget negotiations. We do not need over 60% of our city budget going to Phoenix PD when we are continuing to see a rise in houseless people. As of January 2020, Phoenix has seen over 7,000 counted people experiencing homelessness. 51% are unsheltered. There has already been an 18% increase in unsheltered people in 2020 versus 2019. Not only is there a severe shortage in beds to provide shelter, but Phoenix does not currently have a system in place that one can call to assist in finding someone a bed if they are needing rehoming assistance. It is illegal to arrest an unsheltered homeless person if there's not enough sheltered beds. However, there must be a system in place to identify available beds, which our city has not developed that system. Our city has failed to create that system. In this new plan that was presented to be voted on, the community has not had oversight to give feedback. Please finish I'm asking your sentence. You, I'm asking you to take $15 million from police to pay for this new crisis response program. I'm also asking that we have visibility into the budget negotiations moving forward. I'm also asking that you direct the $400 million in COVID relief to go into the community to support us in things like housing assistance, public transportation, health care, vaccine distribution, Thank you. Our next speaker is Layla Cabonia. Layla, are you on the line? Layla is not on the line. Our next speaker is Cleo Warner. Cleo, are you on the line? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hi, as mentioned, I'm Cleo. I'm a resident of District 8. I've lived in Phoenix for less than a year, but upon moving here, the brutality of the police force became almost immediately apparent to me. 
it didn't take long for me to hear of, recognize, and then witness firsthand the needless violence of police officers in Phoenix. So continuously increasing the police budget signals to constituents that our physical and mental well-being is worth less than maintaining the status quo here. Maintaining such a massive police budget in the wake of death after death is not only an idiotic economic decision for the city, but it's also a gross and disgusting disregard for the individuals and families who've lost loved ones at the hands of the Phoenix police. It is downright shameful. As a resident of Phoenix, I would feel safer and happier if instead of pouring millions of dollars into the police, the city instead invested in solutions that have proven to reduce violence. This means no new civilian positions for the Phoenix police. Adding more members to a group that is so horrifically rooted in violence and systemic racism will never solve the problems that we face here. This means that the funds used to create the new crisis response program must come from the police department, not the surplus. And this also means that the city must move $10 million from the crime suppression squad and reallocate this money for low barrier shelters and housing support, free public transportation, and substance abuse rehabilitation centers. As a support, as a housing support specialist, I too often encounter how inadequately the city's supportive housing and mental health networks function. The fact that the resources exist to make these systems better, but you instead choose to put the money towards an ineffective and violent police department makes the lack of effective resources in the city that much more tragic. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Katen, excuse me, Caitlin Clifford. Caitlin, are you yes, on the line? Evening. Hi, how are you? Doing well, please proceed. Great. I beg you to reject this budget proposal in its current form and instead to fund the no cap crisis assistance program that takes mental health crisis calls away from the police, ICE and the fire department. Last year in Phoenix, my friend was having a manic episode. He hadn't slept in days, he was agitated, confused, and he had lost touch with reality. So his mother called the behavioral health hospital and begged for their help. They explained that legally they were prohibited from assisting patients in crisis and that only the police are allowed to assist the mentally ill in this situation. When police arrived on the scene, I approached them and again explained that my friend was unarmed, nonviolent, had no criminal record and was not accused of a crime. He was simply having a manic episode and needed a ride to the behavioral hospital. One officer can be heard on my cell phone video saying to the other, we just need a crisis prevention officer. But the other says, yeah, there are only so many of those available and we're trained to handle this some too. Police tackled my friend and pinned him to the ground after being on the scene for just over 60 seconds. They kept him pinned to the ground with their full body weight for 14 minutes while he cried out over and over that he couldn't breathe. More than two dozen officers responded to the scene, shutting down the neighborhood intersection and drawing a massive crowd. A helicopter flew in a spotlight in under 10 minutes and undoubtedly more guns. My friend was punched in the head repeatedly, hog tied with leather straps and then carried out like actual livestock in front of his entire neighborhood who were now chatting about his supposed crimes to require so very many police vehicles and now two helicopters flying above us. My friend was arrested and criminally charged. He was locked up for weeks while he was suicidal and manic. He now has a criminal record. This treatment of the mentally ill is not only horrifying, it's commonplace. Mental health crises account for 10% of 911 calls nationwide, yet they result in 25% of annual police shootings. Police don't know how to care for the mentally ill and we cannot expect them to, it's not their job. If you send an inappropriate person, you will get an inappropriate response. It's no cap, what you're voting on isn't just whether or not to fund a solution that solves this life-threatening problem. You're letting Phoenix know whether or not you intend to continue locking up the mentally ill moving forward. Because you're aware of please, the problem now. You can't say you didn't please know complete it was your sentence. You need, please, I need, I'm asking for you to vote on the no cap funding assistance program and reject the bill and it's the spending budget in its current form. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maria Sanchez. Maria, are you on the line? Forma. Me puede escuchar? Maria Sanchez, are you on the line? Maria Sanchez se encuentra en la línea? Is that our Maria? 
Maria Sanchez. Mm -hmm. I think Mario, I think we need I you to translate, you. please. Maria, adelante. Hi, yeah, this isn't Maria Sanchez. This is a group of us all registered under our office phone, but we didn't register in Maria Sanchez. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We will go to our next person, Ginger Fargus. Ginger, are you on the line? Ginger does not appear to be on the line. We will go to our next speaker, Hava Derby. Hava, are you on the line? Hava, are you on the line? Hava Derby. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Oh. Great, thank you so much. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I am calling on behalf of No Cap Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program. Um, I know we're heading in the same direction here, and it's really exciting to know that there's going to be money allocated for this crisis assistance program. I couldn't really go uh, through my time without um, touching on the verdict today in the Chauvin murder trial and to see that though justice isn't served yet, we're looking at accountability and America's ready for accountability. Uh, Phoenix is ready for accountability. And it's very exciting to see that we're moving that direction. And no cap is moving in that direction, um, getting police uh, out of the community needs for mental health assistance, um, just welfare checks, um, things that don't need police presence. And so I'm very heartened that we're moving in that direction. So in uh, the direction of a crisis assistance program, we're asking for uh, 20 million a year, a fixed and ongoing budget, um, community input and ad hoc committee to um, make sure that the community is involved in keeping the program on track. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and yes, um, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I'm being told Maria Sanchez. Okay. Oh my God, um, you guys. Oh my God. Can go on? Yeah. <laughs> Our next speaker is Jacob Rolford, Rayford. Jacob Rayford, are you on the line? That is definitely Jacob Rayford. Um, good afternoon, y'all. Um, in City Council, all in attendance, my name is Jacob Rayford from We Rising, as well as an advocate for the Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program, or NOCAP, an initiative seeking to create a department of the same yeah. name that will uh, house dis uh, dispatches from uh, check welfare calls all the way to what is categorically defined by Phoenix police as nonviolent crimes. Uh, you know, as it'll specialize in substance abuse calls plus other dispatches, such as behavioral health crises and uh, calls pertaining to the unsheltered community. Now, um, since last year, we've been attempting to establish dialogue with the city about not only creating an independent first responder department such as NOCAP, but the essential requirements to ensure this first responder service is instituted on behalf of the community and free of influence from a carceral system. So we've calculated a minimum requirement of no less than $20 million uh, annual budget scaled up from Cahoots and White Bird Clinic in Eugene. We set a requirement that units do not engage in any police work nor serve as a proxy, proxy for the carceral system, that units do not carry weapons or engage in hostile de-escalation tactics, that units are certified in behavioral health and, and, and medical uh, science fields. Now, furthermore, 
Regarding the budget, since our iteration of the CAP program would relieve a substantial amount of work from the police department, no CAP's $20 million annual budget to come directly from funding reserved from the Phoenix Police Department. Again, it's not political, it is practical. This community has done extensive research and made our intentions clear far, uh, before the city's CAP progr program was unveiled. And we have the backing of a national organization, such as a grassroots law, for instance, to help with, uh, with uh, um, you know, getting this word out. Now, we demand... Um, transparency and involvement in the development of this department. To expand on that, it's absolutely essential that the Black, Brown, and Native communities have direct involvement in its inception. I mean, we're disproportionately targeted by aspects of the city structure, and it's clear that one of these issues with the city is lack of, and listen, lack of non-tokenized representation in key sectors of the municipality. So we need uh, um, the city council to Thank you. Please complete uh, your abstain sentence. from voting unless these things are implemented. It is important that the community has a say-so in this, and without that, this is performative. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Amy Mao. Amy, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here, thank you. Yeah, first of all, congratulations to all the new council member, and also it's, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to hear our voice. Uh, I know it's a lot of speakers, so we just want to try to see uh, what we are trying to request. And thank you for all your hard work and opportunity. My name is Amy Miao. I'm a resident in Levin area for over 15 years. I understand that there are a lot of needs for the community. I do support the budget to be covered and balanced, but we do need to have the amenity in the Levin area. It's a beneficial for the health and safety in the community, especially the, during a pandemic area, the kids need have no place to go. And therefore I strongly support requests for the park at the 55th Avenue and the cement way. We have been waiting for this park for too long, over 12 years uh, under the dirt. There are over 3000 kids in the area. We never built a park in the Levine area. The kids needed, the neighbors needed, so we all needed the funding. It's available for build the park, but they request for the maintenance funding. So we've been trying very hard to get this park built. It's a good for our community and the neighbors and the build the connection to know each other and beneficial for the kids and neighbors to getting to know each other and build a better community. So please approve this park as your first term to start. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Our next speaker is Rebecca Patton. Rebecca, are you on the line? Hi, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you, council members. My name is Rebecca Patton. I'm a physical therapist. I live and own my business in District 3. I am talking today to emphasize the need for a community assistance program that is separate from our current police department and immigration and customs enforcement. As a member of a larger medical community, I am required to appropriately refer my patients to other medical providers, including psychological counseling or physician services. We work together as a team to provide the best care possible for the safety of our patients. I would imagine the public safety department would welcome support for community and mental health services that they are not best equipped to handle. As a member of this community, and in the interest of my patients, if they experience a mental health crisis, I do not have confidence in calling a police department who will arrive with weapons and risk the life of my patient. I need another option. Please support NOCAP, a neighborhood organized crisis assistance program. This program can be used for mental health wellness checks, unshel unsheltered concerns, substance abuse calls, and sexual assault calls. Police officers forcibly moving unsheltered people is not an answer. Police officers increase harm after sexual assault calls. Public safety budget is already inflated. Their use of resources are not trusted. By making this program neighborhood organized, we can ensure we are keeping people safe and that they won't fear using these services. We do not need weapons for a majority of service calls. I need to know that I can call the crisis program for my patient and they will not be met with weapons that could result in their harm or even their death. Please consider 
reallocating this money to an entirely separate entity from public safety and giving at least five years of pool funding. We demand transparency and community involvement and program created that does not involve community is complete performative measures. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Asher Abeg. Asher, are you on the line? Yeah. Please proceed. Hi. Hi, my name is Asher and I am six years old. I really want to park because it's really close to my house. So I, it will take a short time for me to get there. And so, and I really want to park. The one on 55th Avenue and Samantha. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Our next speaker is Lisa Cooper. Lisa, are you on the line? Lisa does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Eric Brickley. Eric, are you on the hello. line? Yes, hello, I'm Eric Brickley. I live in uh, Grand Avenue on um, Grand Avenue downtown. I help lead Feed Phoenix for a local organization dedicated to reducing food and housing insecurity. Uh, I wanna thank everyone who can hear me right now. <clears throat> uh, this conversation isn't just about dollars. It's easy to abstract away the actual consequences of budget proceedings uh, behind the conversation of dollars, right? But in actuality, this is a conversation about the value of life. When we pick and choose where the dollars go while not fully supporting the most vulnerable, we are implicitly, implicitly commodifying the value of this human life. Um, how many people must die or be born on the streets of this city? It's like, this is a question we ask ourselves or I hope we could. How many people have to die or be born before we decide to make our explicit mission to care for all of them? Okay, I completely endorse a proposal by NOCAP for a completely independent and self-sufficient crisis response department. Uh, the, indepart the independent department will obviously have a positive effect, lasting effect for our unhoused neighbors and the community at large. You've obviously seen and heard what the residents of the, of the city want, and it's not more policing. The change we support comes from increased access to city services and decreasing the community interaction with the police. We don't want more accountability. We don't want more civilian positions. We want a decreased interaction. As a director of Beat Phoenix, I expressly want to see a completely fully funded at $20 million, completely independent crisis response department. And the promises made about shelter expansion to be kept. The city needs to at least double the previous $10 million they spent on, on shelter services, as well as $20 million for yearly operations. All right. And the measly $171,000 we spent on housing is nothing in a city this size. The city doesn't want more policing. Literally, no one has asked for that. We want more support and services. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Silverino. Ontiveros? Yes, uh, so very Ontiveros, and I want to thank the council members and Mr. Zerker for this opportunity. I live in the Grant Park Historic Barrio at 802 South Montezuma Avenue. Uh, two year, for the last two years, we requested uh, assistance. 150 years ago, an immigrant named Daryl Dupa helped name the city of Phoenix. His building, the Dupa Adobe, is located at 118 West Sherman. Every time it rains, less and less of it is standing. We need help funding uh, the Parks Department to help us preserve and restore that building. Secondly, uh, we also ask that the park have equipment for adult exercise. We participate in Walk Phoenix, Fit Phoenix, and the police department sweat uh, program, but we really need equipment for the, uh, the adults in the neighborhood. And also we support additional trees. Our neighbors have, have planted over 150 trees over the last three years, but we are still in the urban heat island. 
We are one of the hottest neighborhoods in the city of Phoenix. And lastly, an emergency, a few weeks ago, an emergency was held, was called into the police department when neighbors saw, witnessed young men kicking in a neighbor's front door. We called 911. We were on the phone for on hold for 4.5 minutes. We hope that was an exception to the rule. We need to make sure the police department is prof properly funded. And at the same time, we support the addition of crisis response teams. But the mayor and city council must understand that uniformed police officers will still have to respond until it is safe for the fire department or civilian crisis team members to safely respond. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Indigo Ross. Indigo Ross, are you on the line? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Yes, can you hear me? Okay. Hello. Thank you, everyone, for having me here. Thanks for bringing us all here together. And uh, wonderful words from my, the previous speakers here on this call. So I'm here to say, let's invest in solutions, the fun Phoenix Police Department. Invest in solutions means police can invest more time with their family when there's less crime, more time for them to be home safe and sound with their families. Let's move $15 million from police to pay for a new crisis response program. When other people are sent to take care of crisis, the police can be home safe and sound with their families and never have to make the decision to kill another community member. Let's move $10 million from the Phoenix Police Crime Suppression Squad. Instead of a negative goal, let's make a positive goal, the community support team, where there are people fostering community individuals to contribute back to their family and community as we create more capable community members. Oh, sorry, that was a period there. As we create more capable community members, the police can spend more time at home, safe and sound, and not have to make the decision to take a life or protect theirs. And say no to the 75 new civilians positions for Phoenix police. Let's keep these community members safe at home with their families so they don't have to face the possibility of deciding whether to take someone else's life or not. And we have to provide COVID relief for the people, not the police. The police are employed and thousands of our community members are not. Thousands of Phoenix community members are currently not safe in a home with their families. Being houseless makes our community members more vulnerable to being victims of crimes. We must protect the most vulnerable by investing in their safety. Our communities demand funding for free transportation, rehabilitation services, and a center in West Phoenix, and low barrier shelter slash housing support. We reject funding into the police and the process for the MOU negotiation to become fully public. Thank you for your time and long attention. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cassandra Belson. Cassandra Belson, are you on the line? Yeah, can you hear me? We can. Please lower your speaker so you can come through clearer. Thank you. My name is Cassandra Belson, and I am a homeowner, businesswoman, and original Venetian living in District 7. I'm here today to say no to 75 new civilian positions for Phoenix Police, to demand that 10 million be moved from the Phoenix Police Crime Suppression Squad to fund free transportation and bus only lanes, rehabilitation services, and a center in West Phoenix, and low barrier shelter and affordable housing, as well as reparations for the families who have lost someone to police violence and a Green New Deal in Phoenix. I want $15 million from the police budget to pay for a crisis response program. And I want the 400 million in COVID relief funds to not go to police bonuses, but to relief for those most impacted by this pandemic. Lastly, I demand that the process for the MOU negotiations becomes public. Um, and if it doesn't, you reject this budget. Recently, Mayor Lamumba of Jackson, Mississippi said, that a budget is a moral document, a moral document that reflects our values. And in the aftermath of a momentous decision in the Derek Chauvin case today, I am left feeling that our fight for morality in this city, in this budget, hasn't even begun. The truth is more money for people won't bring George back or Dion Johnson, but it can do something to prevent another murder from happening. What we're asking for is not ludicrous. It's what we need. It's what is right. And until you do that, until you act on that, we're going to be showing up in the names of all those who have been lost 
to a lack of morality in this city council. Also, give the Levine people their park. Thank you. Our next speaker is Kelly Kwok. Kelly Kwok, are you on the line? Last call, Kelly Kwok, are you on the line? Hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, please proceed. Hello, I too am against the 75 new civilian positions for Phoenix Police. PPD says it's necessary to increase transparency, but every attempt by police to increase transparency and training has failed. We need access to public records from police, but continuing to add more people to a rotten system isn't going to fix anything. Police records need to be handled by the city clerk's office. Phoenix police currently want to hire more people to do less work instead of cutting vacant positions and placing those funds where the community needs them. That's not okay. Legalizing marijuana should result in thousands fewer arrests per year by PPD, and the creation of the crisis response unit will significantly decrease the number of calls the police need to respond to. Those positions must go to programs and resources the community members need. We demand $15 million from police, not the surplus, to pay for new crisis response program. We want to move 10 million from the Phoenix Police Crime Suspension Squad to fund what we want, which is free transportation and bus only lanes. We have services and a center in West Phoenix, low barrier shelter and housing support, the reparations and direct redistribution of resources and the Green New Deal and climate justice. COVID relief should be for the people, not police. We demand you reject this budget until the process for MOU negotiations become fully public. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lily Via. Lily Via, are you on the line? Yes, I'm right here. Um, hi, my name is Lily Via, um, and I am a white PhD candidate at Arizona State University, and I study sociocultural anthropology. As a community-based researcher, my work revolves around understanding what communities need to maintain resilience and thrive. City Council members, please acknowledge how destructive the Phoenix uh, Police Department is. I'm a resident of District 6, and I've been paying attention to their activities over the past few years. They have murdered at least 115 people since 2015, and they have failed to investigate thousands of sexual assault and domestic violence cases. They continue to harass and assault the increasing number of unhoused people in Phoenix. These activities do not encourage community resilience. Please do not create 75 new civilian positions for the PPD. The people need the $25 million you want to allocate to the Crime Suppression Squad and the Police Crisis Response Team. Please use that money for a COVID relief fund, free transportation, rehabilitation services for uh, substance abusers, and more low barrier shelters and housing support for the almost 200 people who die of heat-related morbidity in Maricopa County every year. Reject this budget until the MOU negotiations with the police union become fully public. The police need to be held accountable, and our citizens need human services for our communities to thrive. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike Cassidy. Mike Cassidy, are you on the line? Final call for Mike Cassidy. Are you on the line? Our next speaker is Nicole Cassidy. Nicole Cassidy, are you on the line? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. 
Uh, hi, uh, my name is Nicole Cassidy, and I've been a Phoenix resident for 16 years, first in District 1 and now in District 6. I have two children who were born and are being raised in this city, and I'm here today because I want to help build a Phoenix that prioritizes health and safety for our community and not criminalization. I'd like to see the city say no to 75 new civilian positions for the Phoenix Police Department and reallocate $10 million from the Phoenix Police Crime Suppression Squad to support community needs, including free transportation and bus-only lanes, resources for addiction and substance abuse, including a rehabilitation center in West Phoenix, and low barrier shelters and affordable housing to support the growing unhoused community. I'd also like to see 15 million reallocated from the police department instead of from the surplus to support a new crisis response program to be developed by community members. I'm also demanding COVID relief for the community and that we have a direct say in the 400 million in COVID relief supporting or support coming to Phoenix. This money needs to fund the people and resources that have been hit hardest by the pandemic. Using COVID funds for police bonuses or to grow the police budget harms our collective recovery by denying resources to those most impacted. That money should be used for housing assistance, public transportation, health care, vaccine distribution, income support, and child care assistance. I'd, I'd also like to state that until the process for MOU negotiations between the police union and the city of Phoenix becomes fully public, this budget should be rejected by council. The council has the power to change this process and end these closed door negotiations. Thank you. Oh, and Mike Cassidy is here if you want to call on him again. It, it wasn't working the last time. Okay, we will go back to Mike Cassidy. Are you on the line? Hello, can you hear me this time? Yes, please proceed. Awesome, thank you. I'm a resident of District 6. My council member is Sal DeCicio, which means that I toil in a perpetual state of local representation sadness. Uh, I am here to say that there are many things that have proven to increase community health and safety, but policing is not one of them. But you wouldn't know that from the wildly disproportionate amount of money that the city of Phoenix spends on a system that does not address the root causes of any of the social issues we face as a community. And for that reason, I say no to the 75 new civilian positions at Phoenix Police. We understand that some of those positions are intended to increase transparency and to process requests from family members who have lost loved ones to violence and abuse. But there's no reason that those could not exist in the city clerk department or any other department where the rest of the city answers its FOIA and public records requests. I also demand that we move $10 million from the Phoenix Police Crime Suppression Squad, that the COVID relief money that the city has access to be used for those most directly impacted, the people of our community, not for police. That $15 million from the police, from the police budget, is moved to pay for new crisis response programs. And with that surplus money, from the 10 million previously mentioned, our communities are demanding funding for free transportation, rehabilitation services with a center in West Phoenix, low barrier shelter, shelter and housing support. And we ask that the council members reject this budget until the process for the police MOU negotiations become fully public. And I second the motion to get Asher and the Levine crew their damn park. Thank you. Our next speaker is Yvonne Harrison. Yvonne Harrison, are you on the line? Yvonne Harrison, are you on the line? Yvonne does not appear to be on the line. We will move to our next speaker, Selena. Toshida, Selena, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Please My proceed. name is Selena Toshida. Uh, I am a white PhD student at ASU downtown. My office looks out onto Civic Space Park where bored police officers routinely harass unsheltered people. They are so obviously over-resourced and overstaffed. And personally, I do not feel safer with them around. Um, I feel like my body is safe. 
but at any moment I might witness their violence. Whether or not we are directly impacted, we are all living in a violent city, so long as council continues to spend our tax dollars like they do. I join my fellow community members in calling for money to be reinvested in community care, like free transportation, rehab care, low barrier shelter and housing. It's not enough to sparsely fund these social services. We need cops off our streets so that we have the space and the substantive resources to provide real community care. I yield my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is George Brooks. George Brooks, are you on the line? George Brooks, are you on the line? George Brooks, se encuentra en la línea, George? George does not appear to be on the line. We'll move to our next speaker, Catherine Foley. Catherine Foley, are you on the line? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, good evening, and th th thank you for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, say congratulations to the new council members, and uh, and 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 also thank you for uh, uh, agreeing to serve and to uh, uh, provide uh, 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 leadership for our, our community. Um, I, uh, I I'm here this evening uh, to speak in favor of the arts and preservation uh, portions of the budget. Others have spoken really eloquently about the importance and the impact, but I simply want to add that, you know, we are, we, those of us in the arts community are really thankful for what the mayor and council uh, did over this past year in providing uh, several million dollars uh, for in COVID relief money for the arts sector uh, in, in Phoenix. And because we think it, 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 it demonstrates that uh, uh, the city staff and the council understand how important the arts sector is to our community, the financial, the economic contributions that it makes, as well as the contributions to uh, education and to community life. So that's why we also feel that the uh, city manager's trial budget uh, increases for the Phoenix Office of Arts and Culture, a $200,000 uh, increase is important as well, because uh, as, uh, uh, as the uh, economy and the arts sector recovers, uh, this money will be well spent to expand programs and to support public art maintenance and also uh, youth programs. I also want to put in a good word for the uh, $200,000 for uh, rehab grants for, in, for historic preservation. Um, as someone earlier mentioned, there, there was a lot of money uh, for some years out of, out of the bond uh, to support this program, uh, but uh, an investment now it would be especially critical in some of the less uh, some of those historic preservation districts that need it and again those those historic neighborhoods are incredible contributors to uh, uh, our community life and the vitality of our community thank you for the opportunity thank you our next speaker is william jungerman william jungerman are you on the line yes i am can you hear me Yes, we can. Please proceed. Thank you. I'm calling uh, to support the proposed uh, Museum of Arizona Artists uh, that would be housed inside the current Carnegie Library, uh, which is empty, um, run by the uh, City of Phoenix and funded by the county, as I understand it. Uh, I am on the board for that organization. Uh, my family has been involved in the arts community uh, since we moved to downtown Phoenix in 1972. Uh, my father is on the board of trustees at the Phoenix Art Museum, is on the board of the Scottsdale Museum of Contemporary Art and the ASU Art Museum. He was just named one of three finalists uh, for the Governor's Arts Awards in the philanthropy category just two weeks ago. 
My mother was a docent for 20 years and on the board of the Contemporary Forum of the Phoenix Art Museum. I was on the board for the Men's Arts Council of the Phoenix Art Museum for over 10 years. They're the largest support organization for the Phoenix Art Museum and have raised over $10 million since their inception. My family has one of the largest private collection of Arizona artists um, and are personal friends with many of them. Uh, since the Carnegie Library sits empty, I can think of no greater youth, use than uh, the Museum of Arizona Artists. Um, as you may know that the light rail is gonna be extended down Washington Avenue down to the Capitol. And as a result, that's gonna give access to the minority community and underserved parts of the city, giving many people access to enjoy Arizona artists. I'm asking the city council to support the project um, by providing funding for the facility and resources. I'd like to thank you very much for your time this evening and hope that you'll consider this uh, proposition uh, to enhance the value of our community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Luke Black. Luke Black, are you on the line? Uh, yeah, I'm on the line. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. All right. uh, uh, first of all, I just want to note that there are, are a lot of Spanish callers that are waiting um, to be admitted. And I know y'all started prioritizing online folks. So if you can introduce some of those Spanish folks that are waiting, they have a right to be heard and not have to wait all the way till the nine or 10 o'clock when this meeting is over. Second of all, Council Member Ansari, welcome. In the last four years, 18 of your constituents have been shot by Phoenix Police Department. The police force that your vote validates is terrorizing this city. Your predecessor and the mayor and council members Pastor and Stark each voted to continue supporting one of the most violent departments in the country. Now you're here. What can we expect from you? Council members, city manager, these are the asks for you. Funding for the new mental health program must come from all of, from the police budget, all 15 million. We are replacing the police with professionals. The police no longer need that money. This funding must come from the police budget. The police are no longer needed to enforce marijuana laws. 10 million must come from the crime suppression budget and go directly to free public transportation, a substance addiction center in Maryvale, support for folks experiencing homelessness. Do not fund the 95 civilian positions proposed by Phoenix PD. Other city, cities have gotten in compliance with contractors or only a few temporary staff. This is a ridiculous ask. For the city manager, the ARPA money, that is coming. $400 million to the city for the people. All that money better end up in community identified needs. Do not give any of that money to the police. Thank you. Please complete Council your members, sentence. City manager, we can do a lot better than this budget. Council member on side. Thank you. Our next speaker is Michael Zimmerlich. Michael Zimmerlich, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Yes, I've been a small business owner for over 13 years here in Phoenix, and I want to discuss the Phoenix Biz Connect by Hub platform, which connects Phoenix businesses to each other and to the city of Phoenix. This platform gives access to finding services, grants, and education that can be challenging to find and vetted for legitimacy. This platform has been extremely useful for my company's growth and to build a better relationship with the city of Phoenix. More importantly, besides the technology, is the people behind the platform, which not only is created by a Phoenix-based company, but they are some of the most supportive, kind, and ambitious people that I have known and a huge supporter of local businesses and, this, and the Phoenix economy. Because of the impact of COVID-19 to businesses, this has been very helpful, 
However, I feel strongly that this platform will continue to benefit building and nurturing the, the relationship between small businesses and the city of Phoenix to support a strong local economy. I highly recommend to continue supporting this platform to support local businesses in the Phoenix community. I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sylvia Zamaron. Sylvia, are you on the line? Sylvia does not appear to be on the line. We will next move to Claudia Deli. Claudia does not appear to be on the line. We will next move to Sabrina Ker. I'm sorry, I'm not going to say this right. Kernagias, Kern Sabrina Kernagias. Sabrina, you are me? you on the line? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Hi there. My name is Sabrina Kregas, and I am here again to express the importance of the verbiage that the Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program, NOCAP, is demanding to be implemented in the Phoenix City budget. Of the 18 demands that NOCAP has presented, all of which are equally important, the ones that are critical to be reaffirmed to ensure the longevity of the program is not compromised includes the following. A crisis assistance program independent from current first responders, does not report to police or ICE, community oversight and control, and $20 million to secure sufficient long-term funding from the Phoenix PD. This program is vital to our community's future especially to the most vulnerable population, such as the unsheltered, substance abusers, and those with significant needs in behavioral and mental health, which my daughter just so happens to be a part of. It is from personal experience that the Phoenix Police Department has proven to me that they don't hold the capacity of being able to properly and peacefully execute matters that involve individuals described as above. Phoenix PD has had more than enough time to build trust and transparency. It is time to allocate their funding to a program that will provide resources that project a better quality of life to those in need. So on behalf of my daughter, whose disability prevents her from being able to speak, I am here today to be her voice. As her mom, it is my job to advocate on her behalf and I will continue to do so all the way until I take my last breath. With that counsel, as a parent, I am pleading to you to commit and honor all 360 words that comprise of the 18 demands listed by NOCAP and to strip the funds of the police as they have stripped the rights of my daughter and so many others. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bernie Luria. Bernie, are you on the line? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Okay, give me a minute. Um, I'm just here. I'm Bernie Luria, and I'm from District 4, and I'm here to say there is no need for 75 cop positions. Now more than ever, I've seen rise in police shootings, and it's incredibly absurd and disgusting that this is even being discussed in a time where a 13 year old is a threat to a girl and a man with a gun and you're ignoring the needs of phoenix and we don't need more money to go to the very same people who criminalize us for simply existing in our bodies it's incredible incredible backwards thinking to keep giving money to the same people that make our communities unsafe there's really no point here for the city for the city to keep funding it's supremacy. We've said we've said this over and over. We need funding for our communities, free public transportation, low barrier shelter housing support, so resources for addiction and substance use, substance use. These are all human rights, and the city council is debating things like this, which is absurd. And um, that's it. That's all I have to say. So please listen. Okay, that's it. <laughs> so. I had to mute myself. That's it. Thank you. 
Our next speaker is Mia. Thank you. Valesi. Mia Vaselli. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Thank you for having me and giving me this opportunity to speak. I've grown up in the downtown Phoenix area and have been part of this community my whole life. I've seen firsthand the paranoia and fear that many people have of the police. And I recognize that we as a city need to do better. We need to support our community communities positively through funding programs such as mental health and investing in other areas which lack resources. That is why I believe we need to reallocate the 10 million currently allocated to Phoenix Police's Crime Suppression Squad. Instead of continuing to fund 10 million to the Phoenix Police Crime Suppression Squad, especially as legalization of marijuana will lead to less arrests, um, we need to instead fund mental health resources, addiction and substance abuse support, and low barrier shelter for our bi POC communities. As an African American student and community member, I see the need for these resources. I hope that we as a city can seize the opportunity and make a change from overfunding police and neglecting communities. Instead, we need to begin to listen to community members who currently feel unsafe and are calling for change. Thank you for being giving us the opportunity as a community to speak and I yield back my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Tessa Farrell. Tessa. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. I am speaking in direct support of the Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program. Phoenix PD continue to terrorize and murder black, brown, and unsheltered residents of our community. We talk of concerns around a growing mental health crisis, but how do we... Excuse me, but how do people seek treatment, recovery, or even begin to move forward when held back by the fear or threat of ongoing harm from their perpetrators? In this instance, violent monsters masquerading as police, those sworn and claiming to protect and serve, those still patrolling our streets. The problem is cyclical. You cannot even begin to address one without the other. And you as our elected representatives, me as a white person who benefits from systemic, priv systemic privilege, and we as a caring community, all share in our responsibility to address and end that cycle. Defund the inflated police budget, hold these badge criminals accountable, and reinvest the funds into the no-cap program, providing much-needed response services free from police and ICE involvement, oversight, and harassment. Police do not keep us safe. Police protect no one but each other. No-cap is a viable and needed solution for the safety and well-being of our city. It serves as some of our only hope in reducing harm and allowing space for mental wellness and healing to begin. I yield the remainder of my time. Yeah! Thank you. Our next speaker is Catalina Begay. Catalina, are you on the line? Um, hi, I'm Kat. I'm nine years old, and I think we should plant trees to help the planet. And as we use oxygen, breathe, and breathe out carbon dioxide, just take gain carbon dioxide and put out to our planet is done, including us all the time if we don't plant trees it's hot in arizona i like to play outside but when i play outside it's hot and i can't play with my dog or take my cat for a walk till evening at school i do pe i like tennis i can't bear to breathe the well uh so that's why we should plant trees to provide shade on hot days even these trees cool down on trees make shade and you know, oxygen so so we have better air and can survive i we can save the planet and it Plant trees, save your pets, friends, and better save the world. Plant trees. Thank you. Our next speaker is John Sapiro. John, are you on the line? Last call for John Sapiro. John does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Ginger, excuse me, Ginger That's me. Torres. 
Hi everyone, good evening Councilwoman O'Brien and Councilwoman Ansari. Congratulations and welcome to the City Council. I'm deeply invested in helping our city become a national leader in environmental sustainability. I serve on our city's Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission and I chair the city's Urban Heat Island Tree and Shade Subcommittee. I obviously support funding for climate change and heat readiness initiatives in the trial budget, especially the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation and investments in the Tree and Shade Master Plan, Cool Corridors Program and Climate Action Plan, Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion and the 2025 Phoenix Food Action Plan. I'm asking you to keep these items in the budget as currently funded. These investments will help enhance our city's resilience. They will benefit our public health and economy and ensure our city's national reputation as an environmental leader. This is beneficial for our city's growth and prosperity. The EQS EQSC has endorsed and recommended the budget fund a dedicated champion of trees and shade as noted in the budget currently. Prompt approval and hiring of this manager and, and other staff the Office of Heat Response and Mitigation will improve efficiency in our city and help streamline city resources that tie together existing programs across all city departments, as well as find new opportunities and partnerships for our city in these areas. I encourage the council to consider also consider public health when deciding on strategies to reduce the impact of heat, especially those um, items that are most disproportionately impacting some of our residents. Um, with regard to urban heat. Um, thank you for your time. Excited, I'm excited for both of you as our city's newest leaders. Can I say hi? Hi! <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Stephanie Arguin. Stephanie, are you on the line? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Hi, my name is Stephanie Aragin, and I am calling in support with NOCAP, and I'm also calling to voice my refusal of the city budget as in, as is an employer that the city of CAPS and NOCAP, the Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program. We, the citizens of Phoenix, demand a CAP program that is completely separate entity from the police and fire departments. Phoenix police has shown time and time again that giving them more money, over 50% of the city's operating budget, I might add, does not fix anything. Phoenix PD is not solving more crimes. In fact, we see a, a decrease year after year of clearance rates. Instead, we see an increase in over-policing, which results in more death and violence at the hands of police. We demand that $20 million be annually reallocated from the police department in order to fund this program. This is just a drop in the bucket and a very tainted bucket of their over $700 million budget. We demand that any CAP program includes a community oversight committee and does not report calls to police or ICE. I also strongly oppose the addition of 75 new civilian positions. In closing, I also ask you city council, if you were to continue to spend your own personal money on a service that you pay for with such an abysmal track record, and please give Levine their park. Thank you, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, our next speaker is Lori Robinson. Lori, are you on the line? Lori does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Julie Gunnigal. Julie, are you on the line? Julie does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Veronica Baca. Veronica, are you on the line? I am, thank you. Um, so my name is Veronica Baca. I'm a, a resident of Levine District 8, and I am asking you to Consider the build and maintenance of the park at um, Samantha and 55th Avenue. Um, we've waited way too long to have this park built for our children. Um, we shouldn't have to venture out to other communities, other cities around uh, Phoenix, um, just to go to a nice park and spend money in uh, those other cities when we we could be keeping our um, our funds here. Veronica, are you still on the line? Our 
Our next speaker will be Leslie Martinez. Leslie, are you on the line? Leslie does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker will be Pamela Tracy. Pamela, are you on the line? Pamela does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker will be Daniel Hyatt. Daniel, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Perfect. Um, well, my name is Daniel Hyatt. I'm 33, year old, 33 years old. I'm a, a father and an advocate for my community. I am um, sorry, I'm trying to pull up what I wrote here. Um, I've been participating in wheeled sports since I was since I was nine, among having the guidance of my loving parents. I also thankfully had my peers to thank me or to thank for helping me become who I am today. I represent an a unidentified and unmeasured statistic in the city, bike skateboards and rollerblading have not only helped me define who I am in the world, trying to define itself, but gave me a path and a vision as a young child to strive for. Money was never and has never been the drive to become better in these practices. I have always done it for myself. This is the difference between our community versus professional sports. Although that term is coming around full circle and we are now being recognized as real athletes, we still do, we still do not receive the same funding or attention. There's a whole world that demands exploration, observation, and funding it is my community. It includes every practice on wheels. Um, to do, and not just for those involved right now, but the people that will be introduced to this community tomorrow. Um, I believe that we need larger parks and a larger parks and rec budget with an emphasis on building more skate parks, a skatable architecture sponsorship program to allow for skatable installations and public spaces where skate parks may not be feasible and citywide mentorship programs exclusive to all wheeled sports with livable, livable wages for mentors within these programs. What I'm asking for is not only will allow for the expression of these practices, but also will create role models in our community through a ripple effect of mentorships and loving relationships between friends that will become family. Um, it will reduce youth crimes, drug abuse, and overdoses. Accountability, this practice is not just your coach telling you to make it. To Please practice, complete your it is sentence. An internal mechanism that creates a personal standard in how you approach the world. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Roshana Struggles. Awesome. Sorry, you guys. Oh, no. Did somebody else sign up for it all? And, and Roshana, just, are you yeah, on I'm the line? Yeah, I'm just picking it up from online. How did they do that? That is oh, so cool. Took so long, I was late to get to you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Roshana <laughs> Striggles, are you on the line? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Hi, my name is Roshana Struggles, and I'm here to talk on behalf of No Cap Phoenix. I am imploring the city, Phoenix City Council to take a second and long look at the no cap policies. Um, I'm sure that you've heard over and over again why we need them, but let me tell you what we'll gain. We will gain public trust if we invest in the no cap system. As a student at ASU campus on 2011, there was a string of sexual assaults. A lot of the police officers reported that because none of the young ladies um, were able to report these crimes, it was hard to find attackers. I was one of these young ladies. We need this no cap program so that those of us who are maybe scared to ask for help have a better solution rather than just sitting in our own discomfort. As you can see, the city implores you to do this and none of us, absolutely none of us are asking you to invest more into the Phoenix police. Please listen to us. We elected you for a reason. And this includes you, Yasmin. Congratulations on your win. We're hoping that you can change things for us. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Jeffrey Larson. Jeffrey, are you on the line? Jeffrey does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Karen Buckman. Karen, are you on the line? Hi, I'm here. Please proceed. 
Good evening. Uh, I, my request is for funding for the completion and funding for maintenance for the designated city park at 55th Avenue and Samantha Way. It's in Levine. It's located between Baseline and Dobbins Road and a few blocks east of the new 202 freeway. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, this is this was started like 14 years ago. And the city should not forget to allocate funds for parks that have been skipped in past years. Previous comment or mentioned three other similar undeveloped parks in the Levine area also. At least the park at 55th Avenue and Samantha Way is a great way to start. I'm a, a little biased. I live right across from the park on Samantha Way, and we would like to get that um, taken care of. Our understanding is that there are funds available for the construction, but the funding for the ongoing maintenance required is the part that isn't yet budgeted. And um, I'm also told that Pamela Tracy is on the line. She got skipped back and uh, is what wants to talk. If you can go back to Pamela Tracy, and I'll, uh, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Our next speaker is John Lutz. John, are you on the line? John does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Christopher Martinez. Christopher, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Um, uh, so um, um, before I... Um, anything um when this meeting started uh two and a half hours ago i listened to the city manager uh congratulate uh, himself and the uh, the city council for uh what a great job um y'all are doing and um it kind of threw me for a loop because um last year over 500 unsheltered people died on the streets of Phoenix out of about 7,500 people who live on the streets and people to congratulate themselves with that statistic when the city council did nothing to alleviate this issue. And now we're going into a new budget and um, it seems there's more money for the police department, but there's no it seems like there's really no plan in earnest to actually tackle this issue. And so I take exception with the congratulations because even though people who are poor do not fill the city coffers and do not fill campaign, uh, do not uh, provide campaign contributions for elected officials, they are members of our community, valued members of our community and they are disregarded. And the, the congratulations was just, just, I mean, I, I just can't, I just can't understand it. So um, I just, that's all I have to say on that. I, I think it's important right now as you do the budget that you, um, um, that you um, move money from the uh, 10 million from the uh, crime suppress uh, suppression squad and, um, Take that money for, um, uh, I can't even talk anymore, but I, I just want to repeat that what other people said before that we do not need to be uh, having 75 new civilian positions for Phoenix, Poli Phoenix Police, and we, and we need to move money from Phoenix Police into community programs, stopping crime. Please complete your sentence. Oh. Thank you. Our next speaker. Pamela Tracy is now on the line. Pamela, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you. Can Please you hear proceed. Me? Yes. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to speak, council members. I am a resident of Levine in District 8, and I'm calling in support of the park at 55th Avenue and Samantha Way. I've lived facing this empty lot full of weeds uh, for 14 years. Uh, it's time to make a change and make this lot a beautiful park for residents of the Levine community to enjoy. 
we have a beautiful community out here with views of the mountains. And this park is really an eyesore bringing our property values down. 14 years is a long time to see an empty lot uh, full of weeds and overgrown trees and more recently um, packs of coyotes living in the trees, um, which is kind of a danger to the kids in the neighborhood. Um, they're out and about all hours of the night. Um, it's even harder to sit by and patiently wait for green space while the area around your home is booming with development. Please include this park at 55th Avenue and Samantha Way in this budget for construction and maintenance. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Elisa Olea. Elisa Olea, are you on the line? Elisa does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Maria Gonzalez. Maria Gonzalez, are you on the line? Maria does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Lauren Watford. Lauren Watford, are you on the line? Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Okay, great. Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm a Phoenix resident. And I also asked the city to reduce the police department budget and fund services for health and welfare, like housing, mental health, and drug treatment programs. First of all, the Phoenix Police Department is one of the deadliest in the nation. Phoenix PD killed over 100 people in the last decade. That problem is entirely preventable, but hiring more police staff is not the solution. In 2020, the Phoenix police budget was $745 million. That is half of the general fund for the city and also more than the entire military budget of over 100 countries in the world. So Phoenix Police Department has more budget for their city police than over 100 countries have for their entire military. And in Phoenix, that's a 40% increase over the last decade. But at the same time, this increase has not resulted in a reduction in crime. It has not resulted in more crimes being solved. And what that proves is police are not the solution to crime. Crime happens when people don't have their needs met. And we can prevent crimes by providing money for housing, for education, for drug treatment, and mental health treatment, so that we can prevent crimes from happening in the first place and start building a healthy community. Last year, over 500 people died in Phoenix from heat exposure, and most of these people were our unhoused neighbors. So the city council needs to divert funding away from the police department and build shelter for these people so that we can save lives every single summer. So we ask, please reduce the police budget and fund these much needed services. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sarah Ford. Sarah, are you on the line? Yes, I'm on the line. Hello, my name is Sarah Ford and I'm a social worker in the city of Phoenix. I urge you to reject this budget until you alter it to meet the following demands of our community. Number one, move $15 million from the police to pay for this new crisis response program. The police don't need more money to be honest or do a better job. We need to use this money effectively by divesting from violent policing and investing in our community services. If you wanna protect the most vulnerable in our community, alter this budget to move $15 million from the police to a new crisis response program. Number two, move an additional $10 million from the Phoenix Police Crime Suppression Squad. This so-called squad commits the most harm within the police department, and yet you think they deserve a raise? Move at least $10 million from this violent squad and use that money and invest it in our communities, which will actually keep us safe. Number three, COVID relief for the people and only the people not the police. Phoenix PD gets more money from the city budget than any other department, as many residents have already pointed out. There is no reason the police deserve COVID relief money more than everyday people who are struggling to meet their needs. 
when cops in Phoenix already get 150,000 taxpayer dollars per year, I believe this department is bloated enough. It's our money. It belongs to us, the taxpayers. Number four, no to new to the 75 new civilian positions for Phoenix police. Now that cannabis is legal, you have one less excuse to harass our community members. And we know that there are more than enough people with plenty of hours to fill on the job. There is no valid reason to add 75 new civilian positions to this department. And finally, our community demands funding for the following once we'll have all this extra surplus coming from the police budget. Number one, free transportation and bus only lanes. Number two, rehabilitation services and a new rehab center in West Phoenix. Number three, low barrier shelter and affordable housing that will support long-term housing for everyone in Phoenix. Number four, reparations and direct redistribution of dust resources. And finally, we demand climate justice and a Green New Deal. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ricky Escobar. Ricky, are you on the line? Ricky does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Anthony, last initial S as in Sam. Anthony, are you on the line? Anthony does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Flor Ochoa. Flor, are you on the line? Floor does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Jordan Harp. Jordan, are you on the line? Jordan does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Sally Osario. Sally, are you on the line? Sally Osario. Can you hear me? Yes, please proceed. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, in addition to all the other things that people have pointed out about okay, hold on, bud. Uh, regarding the police, um, I think it's pretty obvious that the police don't need any more of taxpayer money. Um, we don't need 75 additional police positions. Uh, we don't need more needless harm for our communities. We need basic services. Um, you know, the Phoenix police has proven to harm the community. That's what they do. Um, so they're really good at that. Uh, I think the council should try something new, maybe try something different um, and see what happens. Maybe more shelters for our unhoused neighbors who probably can't comment in these types of meetings for lack of resources, free public transportation. Um, investing in community is what's gonna save lives. Investing in the police is what's gonna cost more lives. So those are the decisions that you have on your plate. And if you continue to more blood on your hands, um, please listen to the people, um, they're very loud. <laughs> They've been saying this for a long time and they're tired and it's time for a change. So please do that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bowie Estrada. Bowie, are you on the line? Bowie does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Armando Leon. Armando, are you on the line? Armando does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Brianna Gonzalez. Brianna, are you on the line? Brianna does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Sonia Flores. Sonia, are you on the line? Sonia does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Rosa Flores. Rosa, are you on the line? Rosa Flores, are you on the line? Rosa Flores, encuentra en la línea. 
Final call for Rosa Flores. Última llamada para Rosa Flores. Our next speaker is Lori Valdez. Siguiente orador, Lori Valdez. Lord Valdez, are you on the line? Se encuentra en la línea Lore Valdez. Final call for Lord Valdez. Última llamada para Lore Valdez. Our next speaker is Annabel Gabino. Annabel, are you on the line? Siguiente orador es Anabel Gabino. Se encuentra en la línea Anabel. Annabelle. Adelante, señora. Is Annabelle on the line? Se encuentra en la línea, Annabelle. Annabelle does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker. Parece ser de que Annabelle no se encuentra en la línea. Our next speaker is Anna Maria Herrera. <laughs> Anna Maria Herrera, sí. are you on the line? Siguiente orador es Ana María Herrera. ¿Se encuentra en la línea Ana María? Ana María does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker Parece is... ser de que Ana María no se encuentra en la línea. Our next speaker is Ana Laura Juárez. ¿Se puede Siguiente escuchar? Orador. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Y yes, Hi. I can. We can hear you. Can you Please hear proceed. Me? ¿Me puede escuchar? Sí, la escuchamos. Adelante. Escuchar? ¿Cuál es sí, cuál es este... su nombre? Okay, un momento, por favor. Antes de que empecemos, hemos tenido problemas con este teléfono. Entonces necesito que empecemos con la señora Lore Valdés, porque se han saltado y este no sé si solo nos están dando tiempo, pero aquí se encuentra, por favor. Si le puede decir a los consejarios, vamos a empezar con Lore Valdés. Uh, yes, one moment, please. We've been having issues here. We'd like for you to go back to Lore Val Valdez and jump back to her. And uh, can you please tell the council about that, please? Lori, Lori Valdez. Sí, buenas noches. Lore, Lore Valdez. Sí, soy yo. Yes, that's me. Adelante, señora. Sí. Sí, mire, yo mis comentarios, yo pertenezco al Distrito 7 y yo mis comentarios es de que pues no estoy de acuerdo en que nuestro dinero se vaya a los policías. Digo nuestro dinero porque um, nosotros vamos a las tiendas y pagamos impuestos en todo lo que compramos y, y yo les estoy pidiendo que no pase ese dinero a manos de los oficiales porque a ese dinero hay muchas cosas en que ustedes pueden invertirlo, como en personas que ocupan mucha ayuda de, de, como de rehabilitación y en el apoyo de las viviendas y en familias que estamos pasando por el COVID. Y pues pienso que no está bien de que ustedes pasen ese dinero a las manos de los oficiales, porque ellos ya no son una seguridad para nosotros. Y pues yo les digo eso porque yo no fui víctima de, de abuso de ellos hace cuatro años, me mataron a mi hijo. Entonces ustedes tienen que invertir ese dinero que quieren pasar a manos de ellos, a nosotros que somos fuimos víctimas de mucho abuso de ellos. Nosotros estamos ocupando ayuda psicológica y terapia. Yo lo digo a mí porque yo estoy pasando por muchas cosas y pienso que no está bien que les den ese dinero a los oficiales. Y pues también, como le digo, en, en el apoyo de vivienda, uh, nosotros, yo vivo en la aquí en la 65 y la Ben Buren, y nosotros ahorita hemos sido abusadas de las managers y nos están corriendo. Entonces yo pienso que ocupamos un apoyo también de ustedes sobre eso, porque pues ya están corriendo a muchas familias y al corrernos a nosotros de ahí también a dónde vamos a ir a dar con nuestros niños. Y pues no más dinero a los oficiales. Y hay mucha ayuda también que nosotros ocupamos, como hay muchas familias que somos, somos, estamos siendo dañadas por el COVID. 
Entonces, hay muchas cosas en, en que ustedes pueden ver, invertir en ese dinero y no los ofrecer. Please complete your no sentence. Favor de terminar su comentario. ¿Sí, bueno? Sí, ya, uh, ya daremos por fin a su comentario. Ok, gracias. Espero me escuchen ustedes como de ahí. Y gracias por colgarme. Buenas noches. Yes, my name is Lore Valdez, and uh, I want to express my comments. I live in District 7, and uh, I agree that we shouldn't give more money to the police. I, I consider this our money, and that's why I'm saying our money, because we do shop in uh, local stores here. That's not money that should be going to the police. We should invest in the people that need help, people that like they need rehab services, they need shelter, they need housing help. And there's also families that have suffered, suffered because of COVID. So it's not right that this money be landing in the police's hands. I was a victim four years ago. They killed my son. We suffer abuse from them. We, me in particular, I suffer from psychological effects, and so I do need therapy. So no more money to the police. And I support this. I live uh, at 65th Avenue and Van Buren. And so right here, there's people that are suffering abuse from the managers. We're being evicted. We need your support. We have nowhere to go with, the, with our kids, and so no money to the officers. And we also are being affected by COVID. Thank you for listening to me, and thank you for hanging up on me. Thank you. Our next speaker is Maria Sanchez. Maria. Siguiente orador es Maria Sanchez. We don't have a Maria Sanchez. However, we do have the lineup for the next individual. So after Lore, you guys miss Anabel Gavino, who is right here and ready to speak. Please proceed. Hola, soy Anabel. Y es uh, mi demanda y de muchos de nosotros de nuestras comunidades. Exigimos financiamiento para transporte gratuito, porque pues en muchas ocasiones eh, nosotros no tenemos transportación, transportación propia. Ah, también yo, eh, estamos solicitando albergue de Pocas Barreras, un apoyo a la vivienda porque oh, espero que apunte en esta dirección 652 de West Van Buren, de Western Acres donde yo vivo. Bueno, las, uh, las, la, la manager de, de, de Western Acres está corriendo a medio mundo sin darle oportunidad de, de vender sus, sus trailers y se quedan con ellas. Pero también uh, estamos pidiendo servicios de rehabilitación y un centro de rehabilitación al OECD. Muchas gracias. Hello, my name is Anabel Gavino, and I would like to demand that we have free transportation. We don't have our own transportation. And also, I would like to request help for people that are being evicted. I hope you take this address down, 6512 West Van Buren. The manager there at Western Acres, uh, they're keeping our trailers after we were, were being evicted. We need rehab centers for people here in West Phoenix. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Our next speaker is Miros Domizian. El siguiente orador. Uh, I'm with District 6, um, and I'd like to come in. So, Yasmin, this isn't a welcome. This is for you to understand what's going on. Um, your people here in District 7 have been waiting for you to hear them out for the last, event, the last couple hours here. Um, it is unjust what's going on here, but here we are, our parents decided to stay here. I please ask you to consider not giving the money to police, as the police is violent, it's deadly, and the community requires more resources. 
due to this pandemic, a lot of my community members, mothers, fathers, uh, parents, individuals that have lost their employment have been going through hell. And this money needs to go to those individuals that need this the most. I'm angry at this council. I am extremely emotional at this council because your people keep telling you what they need and you keep just covering your ears, not listening to what the people need. At this moment, I am from District 6. Sal does not represent me. His white supremacy does not represent me and my people, people that look like me, people with immigration status like myself. So please reconsider in giving the money to the police and please consider giving that money to individuals that need it the most, your community, who's looking at you. Because if you do not do what they do, like they put you there, they can take you out. Thank you. Our next speaker is Ana Laura Juarez. Siguiente orador es Ana Laura Juarez. Bueno. Sí, buenas noches. Adelante, señora. Sí, este. Exijo. Financiamiento para transporte gratuito y ca ca ¿qué? carriles exclusivos para autobuses, servicios de rehabilitación y un centro de en el oeste de Phoenix, albergues de pocas bar barreras, apoyo a la vivienda. 15 millones de dólares de la policía para pagar un nuevo programa de respuestas de crisis. Rechazar esta propuesta hasta que el proceso de la negociación es para el memorado de entendimiento por su cicla en inglés se haga completamente público. Gracias. Señora, le voy a pedir a que repita la parte de los 15 millones. Ma'am, can you repeat the part that's where you started mentioning about the 15 million? Señora Ana Laura. Okay, Council, um, the interpreter is just going to repeat uh, the part that he did get at the beginning. My name is Ana Laura, and, and I would like to request and actually demand financing for tree trans transportation. Also, uh, new lanes, exclusive lanes for the buses and rehab centers. And we also would like to have, over in West Phoenix, we have, we'd like to have shelters. There's very little help for this type of people. And so we'd also like to ha ask for people that are suffering with uh, evictions and housing. And this is a part where it was non-responsive from the uh, from the caller, where it was not understandable at the end. Thank you. Our next caller is Juan Lopez. Juan Lopez, are you on the line? Juan Lopez, uh, encuentro la línea Juan Lopez. Uh, um, because you all took so long to get to our people, unfortunately, Mr. Juan Alopez had to have a statement if I'm allowed to go ahead and proceed. Uh, we don't want uh, that this money goes to the police. Uh, we want this money um, exactly and to not be to the communication station to the department of the police. We need solutions that make sense to our lives. We need to make sure that our needs are met. We need the free transportation. And there are many people that have to wait under the sun during the heat. 
We need to make sure that garbage trucks are able to circulate more than once a week in the back alleys and the front of the street to be able to maintain our areas clean and safe. We need to ensure that there are centers of rehabilitation for addicts, especially youth, to be able to better their lives. And this is the reason why I'm asking to not just support some more money. Thank you. Our next caller is Naomi Garcia. Naomi Garcia, are you on the line? Siguiente orador es Naomi Garcia. And again, like I mentioned, you guys took too long to be able to hear the voices of those that are monolingual. I will go ahead and commence with her statement. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We, we cannot understand you. We need to make sure that the money that you invest is invested in our community. We need more uh, transportation. We need free transportation. We need more transportation for all those individuals that are addicts and here in the west side of Phoenix. We need to support, we have support of a, a crisis um, unit for health, for mental health. Because as you know, um, it's not very safe for those that are going through crisis. We don't need our money to be taken away from those resources. We need to not fund the police, and we need to put these funds into our community. Thank you. And again, we do have been waiting for this. Please take in mind our petition to invest in our health. Thank you. Our next speaker is Martha Avendano. Siguiente orador es Martha Avendano. Hola, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, señora. Adelante. Hablar con ustedes y escucharnos. Nuestras necesidades. Quisiera pedir que ayuden en centros comunitarios para jóvenes con problemas de adicción, porque muchos padres quisieran ayudar a sus hijos que tienen adicción, pero eso es de mucho costo. Miren estas necesidades en la comunidad. Señora, disculpe, puede, puede, señora, señora, discúlpeme, señora, ¿me escucha? Si pudiera ayudar que el rey público sea gratis, terapias de salud mental gratis, con esta enfermedad, con COVID-19, muchas familias quedaron traumadas mentalmente. Y muchas personas quedaron en necesidad. Muchos pidieron sus, perdieron sus, sus empleos. Y a muchos no les han dado la ayuda que merecen. Y ya no queremos que den más dinero a los policías, ni que pongan las 75 nuevas posiciones al departamento de policía. Necesitamos soluciones sentirnos seguros. Los policías y no nos dan seguridad, no nos dan temor. En donde yo vivo hay mucho vandalismo, pero cuando los llamamos a los que quieren interrogar es a nosotros. Entonces ya tenemos miedo. Necesitamos que invierta nuestro dinero en nuestras necesidades que tenemos como comunidad. Good evening, my name is Marta. Thank you for listening to us. I live in 85033. I'd like to ask uh, and request for a community center, something that would help our youngsters. There's lots of uh, kids that 
suffer and go through addictions, so that would be a great help there. Also, with COVID-19, many families were affected. Emotionally, there's a lot of uh, families that were emotionally affected. We have many needs. Many of us lost our jobs. So we deserve to have these monies in our community. No money to the police. 75 positions have to the police either. So we need solutions. The police, they don't make us safe. They cause fear in us. And where I live, there's lots of vandalism. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Our next speaker is Juana Rita. Siguiente orador es Juana Rita. Is Juana Rita on the line? Um, hello, this is uh, again. Hi there. Um, Juan had to leave again because you guys took too long to get to monolingual individuals, so I will read her statement. Um, I ask that at this moment, um, you know, at the moment, marijuana is legal, and there's not a lot of arrest. And again, that's the reason why there's marijuana is legal, that we don't need to con contract more police. And the money is better served at, for things including transportation, making sure that's free for individuals, resources for youth, uh, resources for those that suffer through, of addiction from substance. We need center, rehabilitation centers here in the west side of Phoenix. We need to make sure that we take care of our homeless because there are so many barriers that can really create them and being able to afford somewhere to live. Again, I'm I'm pleading you, I'm pleading you to please do not fund the police. Um, use these funds to better our community. Thank you. Our next speaker is Estella Varela. Hola, buenas noches. Vivo Hello, good evening. My name is Estela Varela. Se señora Estela, si me, si me escucha. A mí me hubiera gustado que aquí donde estamos el terminador, uh, la gente hispana, hispana uh, hubiera estado también una pantalla para que ustedes vieran toda la gente que estaba esperando hablar y que por causa de no sé, no pudieron hablar ellos más pronto. Pero yo estoy aquí para exigirles que inviertan nuestro dinero en nuestras necesidades que tenemos como comunidad. Necesitamos transportación gratis para todos. Necesitamos también un centro de rehabilitación para gente que está enferma de drogadicción y que sea gratis. Queremos tener una comunidad, una ciudad saludable donde podamos vivir con dignidad. Estamos exigiendo porque pagamos taxes. Es nuestro dinero. Apóyanos, a, apoyamos la nueva unidad de crisis de salud mental, pero queremos que quiten nuestro dinero del fondo de la policía para poner los recursos que estamos pidiendo. También quiero uh, hacer hincapié en que si ustedes están ahí en el concilio es porque la comunidad los puso ahí. Uh, espero que la enfermedad de COVID no les haya pegado porque es este deja secuelas. Se vuelven ciegos, sordos y mudos. Entonces, ojalá y que no, para que puedan escucharnos, porque nos escuchaban antes de que estuvieran en esa silla. Entonces, exigimos, por favor, que nos escuchen. Por favor, escúchenos, porque es nuestro dinero. Gracias. Hello, I'm here to speak on behalf of the Hispanics. We would have really wanted to have a screen here so that everybody that's been waiting here to speak, that we can be seen. And also, 
um, the fact that we weren't able to speak sooner, uh, that's been an ongoing issue. So at any rate, I'm here requesting that you invest more in our community, free transportation for all, rehab center, uh, so that people can get the help for, from drugs, and we request that to be free services. We want a safe community. So the fact that we pay taxes, we demand that these monies be used in our community. It's our money. We also support mental health services, and we want those funds to be taken from the police. I also would like to highlight the fact that the city council members, we put you there. So I don't want you to turn a blind eye. We demand you to listen, please, to our request. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Berta Rita. Siguiente orador será Berta Rita. And Sina, um, the interpreter is going to request before the Spanish speaker, if it is a Spanish request, if it is a Spanish speaker, to speak a little bit more clearly into the phone. The interpreter is having an issue listening to them, so he's going to make that announcement. Señora Berta Rita, si acaso va a necesitar intérprete y todos los demás uh, que sigan de usted, si pueden. Uh, si pueden hablar un poco más claro al teléfono y evitar el ruido que hay en el fondo. Si ¿Sí puede hacerme ese favorcito, señora. Sí puedo, pero también espero que usted diga todo lo que uno, uno dice, traduzca bien las cosas, porque ahorita yo sé poquito inglés, pero no tradució lo que dijo mi compañera, no tradució todo. Mi nombre es Bertalita. Eh, espere, señora. Ya... Espere, señora, por favor. And Sina, the, re the interpreter did make that request. If uh, you can speak clearer into the telephone and try to eliminate the background noise. And the response from the uh, caller was, uh, yes, I can do that, but I want the interpreter to interpret everything because the previous uh, person that was speaking was not interpreted completely. Adelante, señora. Okay. Sí. sí, mi nombre es Berta Rita. Este, yo estoy llamando también porque estoy en contra de la policía. No queremos que se le dé más dinero a la policía. No queremos 75 nuevas posiciones. Nosotros no necesitamos vigilancia de la policía. ¿Va a traducir o quiere que diga todo corrido? Diga todo corrido. Okay. No necesitamos las 75 nuevas posiciones no necesitamos que nuestras vidas sean vigiladas necesitamos soluciones en nuestra comunidad nosotros ya no queremos que sigan invirtiendo en la policía y ahorita yo exijo que pongan un centro de rehabilitación para jóvenes que sufren de adicciones necesitamos un, que den transportación gratis para todas las personas hay muchas cosas en las que ustedes pueden invertir nuestro dinero, ¿verdad? Hay muchas cosas saludables que pueden ser mejores en nuestras comunidades. Mas, sin embargo, no lo están haciendo. Lo único que saben hacer es darle más y más dinero a la policía y mandarlos a nuestras áreas de, de Maryville. Nosotros no necesitamos que vigilen nuestras vidas. Necesitamos soluciones, no que nos traigan más problemas. También esto va para Yasamín. Espero usted, Yasamín que usted sí haga algo por nuestra comunidad, que en verdad usted tome acción y no queremos otro Maico, hay otro Maico en Aguascalcí ahí sentado, nomás calentando la silla, que nunca hizo nada por nuestro Distrito 7, siempre fue. Se hizo el sordo, no sé si no escuchaba bien o le, estaba, le, le sufría de algo, no sé, porque nunca escuchó a nuestra comunidad del Distrito 7. Esperamos que usted sí nos escuche y en verdad tome acción para hacer algo por nosotros, porque acuérdese que fue la comunidad del Distrito 7 que la puso en ese lugar. No necesitamos que nomás vaya a calentar esa silla, necesitamos que tome acción, porque otro Maico Nahuacuasqui no lo queremos ahí por ocho años, porque eso ya no vamos, lo vamos a permitir. Y gracias. Uh, 
Hello, my name is Big Berta Rita, and I am against money going towards the police. We don't need any more money towards the police. We don't need these additional 75 new positions. So no more money to them. They're not a solution to our problems. So what we do need is services in the community. We demand a rehab center for youngsters that are suffering with addictions. We need free transportation. There's lots of things that you guys invest in the community, but all you, all you know what to do is to give this money to the police. So I speak to you, Councilwoman Yasamin, for you to take action, not like Michael Nowakowski, where he was just filling in that seat, just keeping it warm. And he, I don't know if he was deaf or he couldn't hear properly. He suffered from something. So I hope you do listen to us. Remember that District 7 voted you in. We don't want you to be another Michael Nowakowski for the next eight years. We just will not allow that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Rebecca Dennis. Hi, this is Rebecca. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. Um, I have something written. I'm going to go off script. I can see right now that everyone that is in council chambers is tired, weary, and probably frustrated with this speaking um, and all the issues that have happened. I would just like to note that our group that has been speaking probably the last 30 minutes spoke on Saturday, registered in the same manner with the same phone number, and we had no issues. Unfortunately, tonight, many people had to leave because we had been here for almost three and a half hours. They have families. They have kids. They have to work in the morning. We're tired and weary, too. Uh, we're doing our best to show up to fight for our community. So I would just like to say that to the new people that are in those council positions, and to all council members, and to all Rebecca, you need to speak more directly into the phone, please. We, we can't hear you. You're not speaking directly into the phone. It's, it's very important that we make it clear. We're calling people in the order in which they signed up based on the time that they signed up. There's no, there's no moving people back. The, the folks who are at the end signed up at the end. The folks who spoke first signed up earlier. So we're taking it in the order in which people signed up. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dora Mejia. Siguiente orador es Dora Mejia. Sí, hola, mi nombre es Dora. Adelante, señora. Sí. Hola, buenas noches. Mi nombre es Dora. Y esta noche estoy aquí para exigir al concilio que hagan su trabajo que no queremos más dinero para la policía 
la policía no necesita más dinero, lo que la, lo que la policía necesita es hacer su trabajo. La policía no necesita más dinero de, las, de los contribuyentes. La policía no hace su trabajo ni, a, ni en Phoenix ni en ninguna parte. Se me... El día de hoy se hizo justicia por esa persona que la policía mató y eso es un, eso es, es una, un, una ganancia para todo el país, para todas las comunidades hispanas, afroamericanas y americanas, no nada más para una sola persona ni para una, ni para una. Necesitamos que hagan su trabajo. Esas personas que están ahí sentadas y que están que están escuchando. Yo sé que no hablo inglés, pero mi voz voz mi, mi voz cuenta, mi voz es un voto para toda la, la, la comunidad. Necesitamos que te, que hagan su trabajo y lo hagan ya. Es una exigencia, no es una no es una opinión, es una exigencia. Hello, my name is Dora, and I would like to demand, not request, I'd like to demand the city council no more money to the police. They don't need any more money. They need to do their job. They don't do their job in Phoenix or anywhere else. Today, justice was served with that cop that uh, killed that person. That's a benefit to Hispanics, Af African Americans, to Americans, to everybody, not just one. So to you there that are sitting, although I don't speak English, but my voice counts. I count as a vote. Do your job. And I demand that you do, you do this. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sabrina. No last name provided. Siguiente orador es Sabrina. No se proveyó el apellido. Um, um, Sabrina's not here, unfortunately. She has to leave. However, I do want to mention that individuals such as Tori Howell, Amanda Nielsen from 480-234-0470, and also Mr. Zach Deans have not spoken and are still on the line. Thank you. Our next speaker is Stephen Cummings. Stephen does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Kenneth Smith. Yes, I'm here. Please proceed. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, this is Kenneth Smith from the Unity Collective calling in support of the Neighborhood Organized. Key word is Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program. We would like the money, $20 million dedicated funds for many of years, long-term funds dedicated to the neighborhood organizing um, a crisis assistance program. One of the demands of the Unity Collective to the governor is that we have a crisis assistance program that helps with mental health, unsheltered community, um, any type of uh, unsheltered situation or any type of assistance, especially mental health. We need the police officers to be taken away from that particular situation of domestic violence and given to the community to be able to take care of it. We ask and demand that this be taken care of expeditiously and the Unity Collective, many of organizations come together in unity to tell you it is time for us to take away those funds from the police force and give it to the community with a clear cut position on how they wanna get things done. It is independent. It is not part of the fire department. It could be part of their own community organization and be an ad hoc committee out of the city of Phoenix budget. It is imperative that we have proper oversight um, and we have a necessary need for community assistance program and no cap is where it's at. We ask you and we demand that you get this together for the community and that you put those monies in the budget appropriately. As a leader in this community, the communities have spoken and they have spoken over and over and over again regarding the policing in this state in regard to policing in the nation. The one thing we could take care of is our front door and our front door is right here and right now. It is time for you all to come together and really listen to our community. This benefits us twofold. It benefits the police force and it benefits um, also the community. 
Also, give Asher and Levine his part, please, so that boy can go play. And I also would like to say that we do not we do not see a need for 75 officials in the police force, uh, whether they're police or not. Thank you. Our next speaker is Henry Gallardo. Henry, yes, are you hello. On the... Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Oh, man. Uh, dang, now I forgot what I was going to say since I've been on here for so long. Uh, well, happy 420, first of all, right? I've been uh, spending my 420 on here with y'all, but good thing weed is legal now. So it would be pretty cool if y'all um, uh, defund that crime suppression unit uh, in the Phoenix police, uh, because weed is legal and it seems like that would no, that unit would no longer be necessary. Um, and put that money into free transportation and other sort of solutions that can help prevent crime. So over time, we need less and less police. Um, another area where I think uh, we could get some funding from is developers. I feel like as one of the fastest growing cities in the country, we have more bargaining power than we're using when it comes to developers. And we tend to give them a lot of, uh, a lot of breaks and giplets or whatever they're called when they wanna build stuff here. And it made sense when we were trying to develop the city, but now we got a lot more leverage and bargaining power. So let's make them as, as part of these contracts that, that we're making with these developers, let's, let's make them pay for some of these services and solutions as well as the Phoenix police, uh, because they are contributing to the rising cost of living in Phoenix. And a lot of people are being left out, especially our house, house, uh, houseless community. So uh, I guess that's it. Uh, welcome to council, uh, you two, O'Brien and Yasmin. Um, well, uh, the bar was pretty low in District 7 before, so hopefully, uh, you know, you could uh, raise that bar for us. And that's it. Good night. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sarah Schweiger. Sarah, are you on the line? I am. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Please proceed. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good evening, Council and fellow community members. My name is Sarah Schweiger. And before I begin, I just wanted to say how impressed I have been with all the thoughtful comments from all the pre preceding speakers. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. I know it's getting late. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. It was important for me to be here tonight because Phoenix is my home and where I grew up. Throughout my life experience, throughout my life experience here in Phoenix, I have come to know the relationship between the city residents and the city police has always been contentious. It isn't a new issue, the community elders told us their stories, which is why we need new solutions, not more of the same. At this point, adding more money to the police budget is like eating a meal that is too salty and thinking it will somehow get better by adding more salt. We need more well-rounded community support, not more police control. I, like many others, would much rather see our tax dollars go, go towards positive, proactive solutions like the Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program. Let's invest in that. I don't want to call the police already. I don't want to call the police on people who are already experiencing trauma when what they need is help. I've seen police involvement make situations exponentially worse more than a few times. As a city, as a people, we can do better. As a growing city, we have to do better. Which does not mean asking the police to do more or expand their presence. We need to invest in people who are educated and trained to provide support and assistance without guns and tasers. As a recent example, in my neighborhood, we didn't have any options to help the single elderly man who was expo experiencing delusional episodes as his dementia got worse. But we had no options. The police had to arrest him while he was in a delusional state, and it was heartbreaking. And that was the best case scenario. There's so many more traumatizing stories. You have community members doing everything they can think of to hear your pleas. Please complete your sentence. They also. They all spoke eloquently tonight. Please hear us and reflect it in the way that you vote for this budget. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next speaker is Andrea Odegaard Begay. Good evening, Councilwoman. I'm sorry, and O'Brien and Zucker. I appreciate your time here tonight. This has been quite a lengthy meeting. Uh, I serve on our city's Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission, and I'm a resident of Phoenix's District 3. I'm calling in to express my support for funding specifically of the climate change and heat readiness initiatives within the proposed budget, including the creation of an office of heat response and mitigation, which includes an urban heat tree and shade administrator and budget allocations that invest in the tree and shade master plan, such as the cool corridors program and funding additional city park staff. As you know, rising temperatures are an increasing threat to residents of our city. And as noted in the video that played at the beginning of this meeting, we must make sure that those most at risk of heat related illness are protected. As such, these investments should be prioritized in our city's most heat vulnerable communities. And I encourage the council to consider the health and well being of those communities when deciding on strategies to reduce the impact of heat. Noting that these initiatives have an overall positive impact also on air quality and overall quality of life. As Commissioner Torres noted in her comments earlier this evening, the Environmental Quality and Sustainability Commission has also endorsed and recommended the inclusion of an urban forest infrastructure manager position in the upcoming fiscal year and prompt approval and hiring of that manager will allow for connectedness between the tree related programs and like considerations across the city departments and improve the overall effectiveness of these initiatives. So again, thank you for your time here this evening and listening to everyone's concerns and comments. Have a good evening. Thank you. Our next speaker is Karen Olson. Karen, are you on the line? Karen does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Matthew Leach. Matthew, are you on the line? Matthew does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Sushil Rao. Sushil does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Hannah Lowe. Hi, I'm here. Hi, I'm here. Hi, I'm here. Hannah, you appear to have a <laughs> echo. Please lower your speaker and proceed. Is this better? Yes, please proceed. Okay. Okay. My name is Hannah Liu. I was born and raised in Phoenix, and I am here to reiterate the points that have been made earlier tonight by literally hundreds, or at least more than a hundred, other people um, who also live in Phoenix. I'm calling to advocate for the Neighborhood Organized Crisis Assistance Program in place of the currently proposed CAP program. <clears throat> Um, I want to have an organization that is independent from current first responders, that does not report to police or to ICE, that has community oversight and control, and the funding for this should be $20 million of long-term funding taken from the Phoenix Police Department funding. We have heard nothing but good ideas as to how this money can be spent not only the budget surplus, but all of the money that we will hopefully no longer be spending on prosecuting certain charges like marijuana charges. So any of the things that have been proposed tonight from the art museum to the park on 55th, any of these would be a better way to invest our money. But if we invest money in particular things, we can prevent crime from happening in the first place. And to that end, we should move $10 million from the police crime suppression squad. We should not create 75 new civilian positions for Phoenix police. We should take the money for COVID relief and distribute it to the people, not the police department. And we should invest all of this money in free transportation, rehab services in a center in West Phoenix, low barrier shelter and housing support. And I ask that until the process for MA, MOU negotiations becomes fully public that you reject this budget. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our next speaker is Joseph Dora. Joseph, Hello. Are you on the line? go ahead. I'm on the line. My name is Joseph Dora. Uh, I'm a native of Phoenix, Arizona. I've been a resident my entire life outside of my time in the United States Marine Corps. I'm currently commander of Veteran of Foreign Wars in Phoenix, Arizona, down on 48th Street in Thomas. I live in District 4. I looked at the budget. I didn't see one dollar earmarked for anything for veterans in particular. I asked that the city council create a veteran service office for the residents and veterans of the Phoenix Air City. And I asked that the city council create some kind of building that the veterans can congregate in the city of Phoenix that's controlled by the city of Phoenix. I appreciate everybody's time. I'm not going to go long winded. I'm sure everyone's tired, but thank you guys. Thank you for your time and I appreciate it. Have a great evening. Thank you. Our next speaker is Eric Elmore. Eric, are you on the line? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for uh, allowing me to speak. Um, and tonight I'm speaking in uh, favor of full funding of and compliance with all the demands put forth for no cap. Um, I'm a Phoenix native and a local documentary photographer. I am a white middle aged male and I grew up in what I thought was a safe neighborhood. Um, as an initial note, police in the US kill more than 1000 people per year. Um, that is an average of about 3 people per day. Uh, the next highest death toll among first world countries is Canada, and they totaled about between 30 and 40 deaths per year. Um, from my personal standpoint, I want to relay two reasons why crisis funding and crisis calls should be directed to no cap and away from the Phoenix police. I worked as a healthcare professional prior to being a photographer for over 10 years here in the Valley. The overwhelming, the overwhelming majority of crisis calls require calm competent, qualified health professionals with critical training. The police are simply and grossly unqualified. And as a photographer, uh, I have been extensively documenting the Black Lives Matter movement here in the Valley for the last year. I have met with and interviewed over 100 activists within the movement. No cap is what the community wants and demands. And just as a closing comment for all council members, I've been listening to this budget meeting for nearly four hours. Not one person has called for a continuation, much less an expansion of the Phoenix police budget. You have been informed. You have been educated. You cannot claim ignorance anymore. You know what you need to do. So do it. I yield my time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sally Barto. Sally does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Claire Redfield. Claire does not appear to be on the line. Our next speaker is Zachariah Dennis. Hello. Hello. You can hear me? Yes, we can. Please, please proceed. All right. Well, I'd like to begin by saying thank you for letting me speak today. It's about three hours of my time. Um, I know there has been a lot of effort put into the proposed budget. I know it can be difficult to balance the needs of a diverse population when those needs can seem opposed to those who hold power. Um, I'm at ASU's downtown Phoenix campus, and I commonly spend my time and money at the city's businesses. So I think you should listen to my comments. Uh, the first thing I'd like to discuss is that the new crisis response program, I think it's great the city is attempting to bridge the gap between those in a crisis and a team that can actually assist those people. But I think the funding for that program should come from the police budget, not surplus funds meant for community interests. Since this program and many others in the budget will reduce the calls officers respond to, it should be obvious that there should be some fluidity in the funds meant for Phoenix PD. Those fluid funds should serve new programs of the department. The millions of dollars meant for the crisis response program needs to be included in the police budget, not the surplus funds. Lastly, I've heard a lot of great stories tonight about um, 
residents wanting public transportation access. I'd love for that distribution of public transportation funds to be equitable throughout the city of Phoenix. There's a visible disparity in which parts of the city receive investment, and this contributes to the health and safety disparities faced by residents of particular districts of the city. Bus only lanes and circulator buses are great investments for communities who have been systematically disinvested over the city's history and would contribute to the city's current and future climate mitigation efforts. I thank the council and manager for their time, and I'm looking forward to hear how you guys can integrate these community proposals in the final budget in the next two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. That appears to be the end of our call list. I will turn the time back to city manager Ed Zerker. Thank you, Sina, and thanks to all who were patient on the phone. Again, we uh, called in the order in which people signed up. Uh, with that, is, that concludes our hearing. I will ask if uh, Councilwoman O'Brien or Councilwoman Ansari would like to conclude. Uh, start with Councilwoman O'Brien. Just would like to thank everybody for their time this evening, um, all the staff as well as the callers. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank everyone who took the time to participate this evening. Understand that spending a couple hours on the phone um, is a big investment, so we really, really appreciate all of your comments and your feedback. I think that, um, you know, this is day two on the job, so really appreciate hearing everybody's concerns, issues, input, and we can assure you that at least from our office, we'll be taking these issues into account. Thank you. Thank you both, Councilwomen, for spending your second day uh, here in the budget hearing with us, and to everyone who participated, to staff. Uh, this concludes this hearing and the series of hearings. We will return to the City Council on May 4th with a revised proposed budget based on the input and any new information we have. With that, thank you all. Have a great evening. Her living room and started CPR and within about three minutes he took his first breath uh, first responders were there within six minutes of the call and took over the life-saving measures and got him to the hospital and he's fine he had no